Origin PC family. It's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. We have another special live build coming at you today. We are joined by special guest, the man himself, Macy J. We are doing an RTS system with him. Macy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's a good day. Doing it's a great day. It's a great day to introduce a new RTS. Is this how are you feeling about the RTS that we've 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 launched here? Uh, I mean, I, I I love it. It's I've spent uh, a long time waiting for a good upgrade. <laughs> I didn't upgrade for a very long time, so jump into something like this was it's crazy. Yeah, and we're we're really glad to to have you. We also have PJ who is playing with the lights behind the camera. PJ, it blinded me. Doing? It blinded me. I didn't know how bright it was, and I see a blue light strip right now. I, I it looked green. Green means go. I thought that so. whatever the color that is, that's all I see every time I blink. Now it'll go away, <laughs> or it might just make for a really interesting build. It will make for a very interesting build. We got the nice red and green in the background. We got PJ as always behind the camera, doing what he does best building the PCs. We have Macy joining us live as well. We are going to get straight into it. I'm actually going to go ahead and read the specs off for everybody so you guys understand. This is one of our RTS systems, which stands for ready to ship. These are made in the reason being for it to get from our warehouse to your doorstep quicker. So we actually did send earlier in the year Macy, who is one of our newest partners, with Origin PC. We did send him a cool, fully decked out brand new custom PC, but we're going to be doing, we unveiled a line today called the RTS Macy J's, which are branded by Macy J and his, his custom branding, which is amazing and a nice PC for you guys to be able to pick up. So PJ, I'm going to go ahead and read it off for you here. Maybe show some, some of your model work with some things we have there in the background for the case. We have a nice, beautiful Corsair 4000 D airflow black. For the graphics card, we have an NVIDIA 8 gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. For the processor, we have a nice Intel Core i9-12900K 16 cores. For the motherboard, we have an MSI Pro Z690A Wi-Fi DDR5. I know I said Z690. For PJ's purposes, I'm going to say Z690 because he's going to make fun of me since I said Z690. <laughs> Uh, for memory, we got a 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 in there. For the system cooling, we have an IQ H100i Elite Capellix Liquid CPU Cooler. For the OS drive, we have a one terabyte Samsung 870 QVO series. For the storage, we have a one terabyte OPC approved powered by Samsung. And for the power supply, we have a Corsair 750X RMX Series Plus Gold White Edition. If you guys do want to check this out, they will be posting. I can. I need some mods to post the links in chat to the actual landing page where you can see everything we have going on with this amazing activation. We also have information there, a little biography about Macy J and himself. We're going to start talking a little bit more about Macy as well on this stream. Get to know him more for you guys that are not familiar, if you guys have never watched his content. So starting off, Macy, why don't we go straight into that? Tell us about yourself, your experience, how long you've been working with Origin, and just, I guess, your overall experience as a content creator. All right, well, uh, I've been doing content creation since 2016. So actually, that's a long time, six years. Um, I was going to say not that long, but yeah, six years <laughs> I've been doing content creation now. Uh, I just partnered up with Origin recently. Uh, what was it, like last month? Two months ago? Yeah, like two months two, ago. Three months. Two, time, three is months ago yeah. time is flying. Time is flying already. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I just, I started in 2016. I was freshly graduated out of college. And um, yeah, I was transitioning from uh, undergrad to graduate school. And just during that transition, I was stuck home. I got a foot injury from skateboarding. Played a lot of Rainbow Six. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I got really into the game. And I, was, I saw the game in a way that people didn't really see it. And I just started making videos and literally took off immediately. I just shared them on Reddit, shared them on YouTube, and it just snowballed from there. And then uh, like after like two months, I got 30,000 subs at the time. And I'm like, I saw some potential there. So I kind of dropped my original plans. 
and just pursued content creation. It was like, I don't know, it was just, uh, it came out of nowhere, really. So was there ever, so you, it came out of nowhere. Was there ever a previous interest, I guess, growing up for content creation? Did you watch a lot of YouTube, watch a lot of Twitch? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've, I've always watched a lot of YouTube. Um, it was not really like, I wasn't really trying to follow in anyone's footsteps. I was literally just trying to show people how to play Rainbow Six in a way that I wasn't seeing on YouTube myself. And I, I just kind of had the motivation purely from that. So a lot of the a lot of the things go to un the unfortunate, but it looks like it turned out in your favor. The skating accident that we had, mm -hmm. Can we say that that's where that's where well, a lot of the info came from. To start yeah, making I mean it's, it's not the first time I got a skate accident. I skated my whole life, so it just yeah. happened to be the um, one thing you were able to do in the meantime. While it was just, yeah, it was real. just like it was just good timing. Like I was supposed to do, be doing internships during that uh, period, but I was stuck at home, and I just I did that for my for the time being. P, did you have any experience? P, did you have any experience skating? Yourself? No, I was actually I actually did BMX racing. So I was a I was a BMXer. I, I, that was the only sport that you know, aside from like enjoying watching football, baseball, basketball, I was like the one I was always into was BMX racing. So I had, I mean, you could counter my age from all the different bikes that I've different had, but I would love to jump on something now. But the only thing I feel like comfortable with is just getting on a like a like a mountain bike, and I go trail riding out here. I see Stance, your message in the chat about the Echo and PJ's mic. I think we may have feedback, Alex. I believe your mic may be unmuted still. I don't know if that still is. Thank but... you, Marco. There we go. There should be the Echo solved all there. Thank you for that message, Stance, in chat. I personally never skated, but I guess the closest I got to skating, and I'm assuming you may have played this game growing up as well, was Tony Hawk Skate. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's that's literally what got me skating. I've never right. heard of that. What is that? <laughs> that you, I don't know, PJ. Maybe maybe you should tell me. I think you you might know more better than I would what Tony Hawk Skate is. Yes, I have played Tony Hawk Pro Skater before. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember going to the dentist and playing it in the uh, the waiting room. To, to, the that was that was. What yeah. dentist did you go they to? They had a console had a... at a dentist. Okay. Yeah, well, they had a PS2. I grew I grew up in New York. Uh, it was the, it was Nassau County and I went to a dentist in Nassau and in the waiting room, I was the only thing that could calm me down was to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater and he had a PS2 in his <laughs> lobby. You know how like when you go to like Best Buy, they have like the consoles with the extended controllers that you could hold like right in front of you. Yeah. You can't move them any other way. Yeah. Just stuck right I, there. I, I date myself one of those by saying Toys R Us. So that's, that's where I played Tony I, Hawk. I was in Queens. I never seen it. So. Yeah, that was, I'll that was in that was in the five towns where I went to the dentist. So not too far, not too far. Um, Adam is professionally uncoordinated. I am definitely professionally uncoordinated. Thank you, Pixie Dust, That's... in the chat. To be fair, that game gave so many unrealistic expectations of how hard it is to do a kickflip or how easy it is to do a kickflip. <laughs> I think everybody's tried after playing that game. I think that kind of is video games in a nutshell. You could say everyone, everything looks easier in a video game and then you do it firsthand. You're like, yeah, maybe this isn't as simple as it seems. Um, that's that's my take on it anyway. I know PJ is very into racing sim games. So PJ, how, how similar is the crossover there between racing sim games and, and I would say driving? Well, actual driving? The, well, the, the sim setup that I have is like, there's no comparison, obviously. Your real driving is going to be a little more tight, but... But the sensation that what I can get from actually playing, you know, like the, the force feedback from the wheel, I wish I had something that would actually move around, but unfortunately I can't afford something like that at the moment. And that would, that would actually enhance the experience. But for what I have, has been great. I really enjoy it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've seen his setup. His setup is very, very cool. All right, so let's... It's It's... Definitely cool. Uh, Frosted, I see your message in the chat. Does PJ have the stream open on his end as well? Uh, there may be some feedback. Again, there might be a, a, a tab open somewhere. I've mentioned this every stream. Uh, the beauty of doing live streams, there's always some tech issues, some some things that we got to, to fix. So please bear with us while we fix it. For the most part, it seems that everything is okay aside from the little echo and feedback that we have, which we're working on resolving. So let's get let's dive into um, Macy. Let's dive into your experiences. How experience have you ever built a PC yourself? Yeah. How is how has that been? And um, uh, 
and not. I mean, pretty much my. I never really. I'm always. I was kind of just doing upgrading part by part, uh, for most of my life. I think once I. Yeah, so like from the very early two thousands, I had like a pre built Dell, back it's like a regular desktop, and then I just like slapped a graphics card in there. Um, I just kept slapping parts for like the next 10, 15 years. But then when I started content creation, I, I pre, I did a, I built my own PC, uh, and that was like 2016. So, and since 2016, I didn't, I didn't upgrade until I, uh, met you guys. Yeah. I was on a, yeah, I was on the 1080 before, uh, this build. It la it lasted a long time. I feel like it's still it still holds up today. Yeah. And he just got his PC up and running. He actually got his hands on a GTX 1080 Founders Edition, and he's blown away. Even to this day, he says it's better than his Xbox or his PlayStation that he's used. So, he's super stoked with that. And I just love hearing him now. Like, ask him what he's up to, and he's like, "Oh, I was up till five o'clock in the morning playing God of War." <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, um, I'm. I feel like I'm fairly experience with PC building. That's um, cool. It is nice, though, to just have a PC sent straight to me and not have to <laughs> deal with that. The stresses of uh, any other. I, I, I can see where that's convenient. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys not get paranoid about static? I have, like, such a paranoia of static no. electricity. Because well, they always that... talk about it being, like, such a... Not that it, it not that it can't happen, machine. but here, like I guess here in Florida, we don't have so much dry heat, so we don't develop as much static feedback as you would assume. So. <laughs> every time I every time I uh, was building PCs, I would just be so carefully placing yeah, everything. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like touching everything so that I don't shock <laughs> the parts. No, I'm not too concerned about that. <laughs> I'm if I hearing. I'm hearing some feedback. I don't know where it's coming from, but I hear it's. It sounds like someone has the stream open somewhere. I'm not sure if someone does have the stream open on their end. Okay. Never mind on that. I Never can hear a double on up on my voice. I heard a double up on my voice. What does the builder think about cream? I don't know what they mean by cream, but PJ, what do you think about cream? About what? Cream. Apparently, we got asked, what does the builder think about cream? What is that? I don't know. Like, I I, I have a feeling it may be a troll. troll um, no, I probably a reference to my shirt, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Cash rules everything around me. Uh, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. It's funny. It's funny. I'm too young to probably understand. I understand the joke, but I'm probably too young. That's a real knee slapper. All right, PJ. So give us give us an outlook. How are you feeling on the build so far? Where are we at? What is um, uh, are we at your favorite part? No, you're nowhere near my favorite part. I'm still just installed the the M.2, the the uh, one terabyte M.2 Samsung OPC approved M.2 on the motherboard. I've installed the memory and the processor. I've already installed that into the case, and now I'm working on installing the fans. I actually got to screw it down, but I mean, let me see if we can get the camera angle to come up a little bit. Right there. Mm. And then, oh, well, it'll come back. It's also funny, Macy, that you mentioned, because I know you said it's funny. It's it's fun having the PC kind of just delivered and, and built for you. Mm -hmm. But was your what was your I, I want to say, how was your experience with unboxing the crate when it arrived? Oh, very cool. Dark? I was I was surprised. OK, so it's actually funny. Uh, the, it was packed fantastically, number one, except uh, the delivery man. He was the the skinniest, smallest man I've seen. <laughs> man. And the guy was struggling so hard to carry, and I insisted to help him. I said, I can help you. I can help you. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I guess they're not I mean, allowed to I mean, take it's only help eight, from. It's only 80 pounds. It's no big deal. But yeah, this guy this guy was <laughs> really struggling. I, like The guy had to be like, I don't know, like 100 pounds. He was so tiny. And uh, no, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can only imagine the look yeah. on your face. He's like, nope, I got this. I, got I, this. I know it's a PC, and I'm just like stressing out that this guy's just going to trip and fall. End up dropping the PC, but um, it was great. I was, uh, the packaging is fantastic. It's in a giant wooden crate. Um, and I actually kept it. I was Good. surprised. Does that, does that like, uh, 
insulation pillow that you put inside mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. molded. The Instapack. The oh, I love it. It's so good. Yeah, uh, I actually I, saved that so that in case I have to move my PC around. Perfect. Yeah, we don't. Uh, yes, that's another reason too. And then I also like to like tell all the customers too, like for whatever reason, if you can't keep that crate with all the boxes, it's best to do that because even as professional as we all are here at Origin, you know things do happen. So God forbid anything does happen to your system, we want you want to be able to send it back to us, you know, and have it in one piece. I mean, unfortunately, we've I, you know we've seen some customers they don't keep the box, and when they have an issue, they send the PC back and they send it in a box that's not compatible with it, or they try to put insulation around it, and it gets damaged on the way back here to us. So it's keeping the crate and having it you know at it, at your disposal when you need it if something happens is perfect because you can put it right back in that box and send it to us and it'll stay have the exact same protection it did when it got to you uh yeah but uh it was cool and uh, i actually used your video to do the proper <laughs> unboxing cool uh it i think there was a, a qr code right stamped right on the box yes yes you scan the qr code it shows you a video and a tutorial of how to unbox it properly uh, that was my first time ever being a hand model. Uh, thank you, Origin PC. I got, to, I got to be the unboxer of, uh, of of our crates. So thank you to Alex also on the production team that helped film that video. If you guys do ever receive an Origin PC crate, as Macy mentioned, there is always going to be a QR code on there that you can scan, and it helps you unbox the PC. If you guys do maybe plan on picking up an RTS, that is a perfect opportunity for you guys to unbox it in an origin pc crate speaking of which we will mention again if you guys are just joining us here on this wednesday on the origin pc channels and social medias we are doing an rts live build with pj behind the camera over there building the pc we got macy j joining us himself hello we are going to post the landing page i think it just got posted there by Moobot in the chat you guys can check it out for yourself what PJ is building. This is an RTS opportunity, which stands for ready to ship, which is designed for the PC to get from our headquarters to your door quicker because they are already configured and built ready for you. I'm going to go ahead and read the specs that we have here on the PC. You want to show the, the panels too? Cause you, obviously these are yes. Macy J oh, edition yes, RTS yes, systems. Yes, good point. So you do get the Macy J panel on it. Hmm. Beautiful. Does that look? Does that look familiar? <laughs> actually, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it's actually slight. It's slightly different. He I had think. to. He had to. Is it the same? Uh, no, it's, it's different. It, He's it, like, wait a minute. No, it's slightly different. It's actually. I actually like this one a little more. To be and honest. then we got oh. the. <laughs> and then our. Hold on, I'm gonna get the panel over here with the logo and the signature. Oh man, I'm glad. It took me like 20 tries for that signature. By the way. Well, now it's immortalized it really? on glass. <laughs> it looks good, though, man. It doesn't, you know, I, you should see mine. Mine looks like chicken, chicken scratch. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh I, yeah. I had to practice for that one. And, <laughs> How did you end up doing the signature? Was it through, did uh, you, did you do it right. handwriting? No, I just, I just did it by hand and kept practicing. Did you do it on a screen or like, did you use like a, no, like it, actual pen and paper? You, yeah, for the one you sent us, did you do it on, yeah, like what PJ mentioned. Oh yeah, I just wrote it on paper and took a picture of it. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that mine would be with yeah, yeah, I'm didn't, with PJ on that one. It would be chicken scrap. I, I didn't realize you guys were gonna put it on a PC. I thought it was just gonna be part of the uh, the post the blog post on the website. Oh yeah, no, no we all these put are, it on the PC. These are your edition PCs, dude. So anybody who gets anybody who any of your followers want to have the more or less the same spec PC that you have or with something with your signature on it, this is what they would get. Oh, can I say uh, also the cable management on the back panel is incredible. Like I, I was, it was, it was funny. No, because uh, I was looking at the PC inside. It looks great. It looks that. And I was being nosy. I'm like, I got to check the back panel, see how they did the back panel. And it was impeccable. Everything was perfectly placed. That was very impressive. Yeah, we don't play around with that. We're pretty serious. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I make sure everybody's pretty serious about the cable management out here. That's my favorite part. Yeah, it's like one of the most underrated aspects. Thank you. Yeah, so PJ is the one that, pro not probably, I know actually worked on your PC. So PJ is the one that, PJ's favorite thing, which we kind of have a recurring theme here every time we talk about live builds. No one seems to love in uh, cable management, but that actually seems to be PJ's favorite part about the entirety of the building it's process. It's the most the tedious PC. part. <laughs> it's my, right. fa it's my favorite part. It's like, uh, it's, like, it's like trying to figure like a, like a maze out. 
And sometimes if you have a really cool pattern that you already have, when you do some builds like these specifically, you already have a repetitive pattern. You know, they can go by quicker once you have an, once you have it set up. But sometimes you end up coming in, the, you end up building it, and you realize, hey, I could have done this differently, and that could throw you off completely. Well, in my case, it throws me off completely because yeah, then yeah. I start doing like, oh, I could do it this way, and I start rerouting all the cables some different way. Yeah, my old PC before uh, I met you guys, I I tried to do cable management. Actually, I, I think I had it pretty well, but I remember on the back panel, it just the wires did not fit, and I ended up having this little bump just from uh, all the wires be pressing outward. Yeah, like a bulge in the back side of the panel. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's what that's what the majority of my PCs look like when I first started building. We got a good question in chat. This is for Macy. What is in the tank in the background? Oh, it's a bearded dragon. Oh. Uh, yeah, before I started content creation, I used to work at a pet store. And he's a really... I was always into pets. I was going to try to be a veterinarian. That was the whole... What I was going to go to grad school for. Oh, dope, dude. Anyway, I was, I was working cool. as a, at a pet store at the time. Uh, before content creation. Ended up grabbing him because... Unfortunately, people don't know how to take care of lizards. They don't realize like, what cold-blooded animals are. You'd have so a... I had to take him because he's super cool. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's 12 years old now. Oh, nice, dude. Really old. But he's, he's still well. You would have a field day out here in Miami, man. There's lizards all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that in New York. <laughs> like, legit, I can, I can go outside right now in the parking lot, and there's probably an iguana running across the street. I was going to cool. say, there's there's an iguana that will be, I call I call them dragons. So the bearded dragon, I call them dragons here in Florida. They are just all over Adam, in South Florida. You know, you know the big window right there next to my work desk? Yes. That window right there, for the for two days straight, there was an iguana wedged in the corner between the uh, the hurricane shutter. He would just sleep there. <laughs> yeah, but when it gets too cold here, the iguanas fall, like, out of yeah. the trees. It's a real thing. That yeah. Are they, are, are they sure. sketchy? Will they attack you and stuff? Uh, no. You, they're, like, they're to themselves for the most part. Yeah, unless you, like, do something to, like, make it attack you, which for the most part it's hard to do because as soon as they see the sight of you, they run. Yeah. <laughs> They don't uh, want. They don't want to be messed with. You know, it's just like you know, anything else. You know, if you don't provoke it, it won't provoke you. Or you know, right. so I just leave them alone. I see them and they, they just immediately get spooked and they just take off running. So you yeah. said you're a big animal person. You worked in. I I personally, growing up in New York, my my house was nicknamed the zoo. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Uh, so I've grown up with animals my entire life. So is the bearded dragon, I guess, your goat? What is your favorite animal if you had to choose one? Which uh, is it, it would be the, a dog. I had a dog okay. uh, for 15 years. She passed away recently, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, definitely dogs. She's the I'm one sorry that, to hear that. Yeah, no, she lived a full life. It's, it's life. But anyway, um, yeah, she was the one who inspired me to become a veterinarian. So. Hmm. What kind of dog? Uh, was... She was a Pitbull German Shepherd mix. Mm. Wow. Great, fantastic dogs, by the way. Pitbulls are. I, just, I, I always have to mention it. They're so. Uh, misunderstood. They're the sweetest dogs ever. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, they have such a bad. It's it's. Well, it's, actually, it's, for it's, it is for a reason. It's for, it's for but it's for the wrong reason. It's not the dog's yeah. fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I would yeah, love I would love to have one, but here, like here in uh, like where we live, Miami Dade County, they're they're illegal. Yeah, it's crazy. But if you go up, you go up they? one. Yeah, if you go up one county, you go to Broward County, and they're not. So where I am, I can get one. Yes, but here mm -hmm. legally you can't. But. There's still people all over the place that get them. I think uh, England, they're also illegal, which is insane. And that's due to the, I guess, the stereotype they have? Is that the reason? Yeah, they, they have a stereotype. I mean, people, there was a time where people would um, just Turn them use them monsters, for dude. dog fighting. Yeah, they would mm. just use them for dog fighting, and they would raise them to be dog fighters. Yeah. And, but before that, they were actually known as nanny dogs because they're tough dogs, and they're so tolerant. They're great with kids. Like Kids would pull their ear. They didn't even care. If you watch any dodo um, video with a pit bull, you can see living proof of that. They're, they're, they're so they're so gentle with with kids. It's 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 crazy. Mm -hmm. I I used to have a rabbit as a kid, and uh, the rabbit would run free. I'd leave the dog with her all the time, unsupervised, never had a problem. Oh, absolutely. They're really, they're great dogs. But it's unfortunate that they're so misunderstood. It's interesting. I I've, I've always thought they were a pretty cool dog and this, mm -hmm. I think you see them a lot in New York also for the most I, I saw a lot of them growing up in yeah, yeah yeah they're good amount. Yeah, it's all DMX it's all from DMX anything the only dog is that another, is that another 90s joke 
Was yes, that another that's 90s, 90s reference joke that nobody got? That was another 90s reference. I understood you where you were going with it, but I also you never. I was only born in I was born in '98, PJ, so I don't think I count as a '90s '90s kid to you. No. 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 Even '96. No, not at all. <laughs> Say even '90s. '96 is pushing it too. That would make. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'll make you what 20, 25, 26? I turned twenty five in January. God, which I want. I want to throw up saying that. Right, but can, we can stop that. We can. St- oh yeah, <laughs> tell it to the forty two year old. Mm-hmm. PJ, you saved the kitten last week. Yes, I did. You did. Where did you save the kitten? Y- yes, I did. I found. On my way to work, uh, I don't know if it was hiding inside of an SUV or a SUV happened to just drive over him. Not run him over, but just drive over him. And I saw him tumbling in the middle of the road. So I picked him up and I brought him here to work thinking that there was a couple people that could help. And they had intentions of wanting to help. It's just, I, I just, I knew at the end of the day I couldn't keep the kitten. So um, our, our social media manager, Marcos, actually stepped up and uh, he said that he wanted the kitten. So he came over to the office, picked him up. And I got to be honest with you, with the pictures he's been sending me, the cat's like living his best life right now. It's like, the, I think that was the best thing that ever happened to that cat. I mean, it sucks that I, I felt bad that I looked around for like good 10 minutes, seeing if I could find the mother. He didn't look malnourished. He didn't look hungry. He had a belly on him. He wasn't, you know, starving. But I couldn't find the, the, the mother anywhere. So I just drove off and brought him here to the office. And Marcos came through and picked him up. And every picture he's been sending me, the cat just looks super stoked. I think all he needed was a good, you know, bowl of food in his belly. And that's it. You're, you're his for life. PJ the savior. It was cool, man. I just spent it was cool, a week. Man. I, th- I, I just spent a week with cats, five cats, four cats in Colorado, which is fun. Cats are cool. I'm a dog guy. Same, as, cool. same as Maisie. I'm a dog guy. I grew up. With, I'm a dog guy too, but I, uh, the cats are cool. I think I I I I relate more to dogs. If that makes sense, I think I, I have a better. I don't know. I like them more than a cat. I would say, and I think. You, you're more per. It, to me, it seems you're more personable with, with dogs. But I guess that varies based on. Yeah, because cats guess, are more independent than dogs are. Dogs are more dependent on what you on, on you feeding them and taking them out and stuff like that. You can leave a cat by itself for like a week and he'll be totally fine and not care that you even left. He won't be running. <laughs> he won't be running to you like, hey, I've missed yeah. you all week. He's just gonna be like, where's my food? You, you're back. And this is the exact reason why I'm a dog person. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with. Uh, I've had a Pekingese, I've had a Shih Tzu. Um, now, I mean, I moved out. I don't have, I don't live with my parents anymore, but I had a golden doodle and two Brussels Griffons. So I've had a wide array of different breed of dogs, which I all, I love them all. I had Chihuahuas my whole life. Yes. Wow. P- P- Chihuahuas, Chihuahuas, uh, <laughs> German Shepherds, pin, uh, Ger- uh, Doberman Pinchers, um, mixed breeds, uh, had a Sharpay, uh, Mini Dotson, but... Like my family growing up, my mom always had a chihuahua. My big brother had a chihuahua. My aunts and the, my aunts, uncles, grandparents all had one. So it, so it seemed only right when I got my first dog, it was a chihuahua. And I had him for 17 years. He recently passed away, but I have a, um, I got another, I got a four year old girl now. And she's, she's, she keeps me on my toes. She's a cool little dude. She keeps, she keeps the office on the toes as well. Is the case 4000D airflow? Yes. Yes. Endless trench. It is a 4000D airflow black. And while you say that, I saw, I believe, believe earlier in the chat, what is the motherboard that I'm going to go ahead and actually read. We're going to go ahead and, and dive down into MSI Z690 Pro Wi-Fi. Did you say Z690 there? Yes, MSI Z690 Pro Wi-Fi. Not MSI Z690, not Z6090, not Z690. How many more ways can I say it, Adam? That's not correct. <laughs> uh, I mean, apparently I said it incorrectly, so I was just making sure. I was doubling down to make sure you said it correctly. Uh, I don't know. I, I've I've gotten this one this one from PJ personally a lot, so just making sure he gets it right. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get down into the specs right there. Mubal just posted the landing page. Anyone that wants to see it on the Twitch side, I will go ahead and post it in the YouTube chat, so you guys can check it for you guys watching on the YouTube stream. Uh, you can check out the RTS landing page if you're just joining us. I have mentioned it a couple times. We're doing an RTS opportunity. We got PJ on. The camera building, the actual build behind the scenes. You got Macy, who the all, entire RTS opportunity is about. The amazing content creator, one of our partners here with Origin PC. You can check out the landing page. Um, but for the case, we got a 4000D Airflow Black with a graphics card. We got an NVIDIA 8 gigabyte 
GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. For the processor, we got an i9 12900K. For the motherboard, PJ, you want to say the one for me one more time? <clears throat> MSI Z690 Pro Wi-Fi. DDR5. Yes, DDR5 <laughs> memory. 32 gigs DDR5 at 5200 megahertz. Corsair Dominator for, RGB. For the memory, we got 32 gigabytes. As he said, Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5. For the power supply, we got a 750 RMX Series Plus Gold White. For the storage, we got a one terabyte OPC approved, powered by Samsung. Sir, I think the you, OS drive. I, I think you might be incorrect on the CPU. I mean, not the CPU, but the power supply. The power supply on the order is a Corsair CS750. Corsair CS750. So you're saying the landing page may be reading wrong. Correct. Ah, so I'll have to get our team to update that. Please. Um, good catch for that. For the OS drive, we have a one terabyte Samsung 870 QVO series, and we got an H100i Elite Capellix liquid CPU cooler. You guys can check out the link that was just posted in the chats. If you guys do want to get your hands on one of these bad boys, these pre-builds, these are limited edition. These also do come with the custom UV panel that PJ showed earlier. It also has Macy J's signature on there. So something very unique. This is a limited run. We will not be always offering this PC. So make sure to get yours while supplies last, which are limited supplies, I believe. PJ, you can, can I think. I mean, the, the, limited. the limited run itself is something that you, if you purchase it right now and this is the spec that you want, you this still ship within two to three business days. You can still get the exact same system from us if you choose, but since it's a complete order buildup that you would have to build yourself, the building process will take a little longer. And but, as PJ mentioned, yeah, mm -hmm. and as PJ mentioned, you could always customize it further. It just will take longer and shipping. Correct. But if this is a spec PC that you want right now and you are one of Macy J's you know, followers and you'd like to have a spec PC with his name, signature, artwork on it, yeah, I would recommend to jump on these right now. You get it. You'll get it with the quickness. And if I'm not mistaken, free shipping. Free ground shipping. Yes, it does come with free ground shipping and lifetime 24-7 U.S.-based support. As, all, as do all of our orders with Origin PC. I see in the chat, GeForce 3000 series time is limited now, although I hear there's a lot of supply. I wouldn't say it's limited, as Macy said earlier in the stream. I, I don't think anything is ever really limited in, in time supply. There's always a use for any C computer parts, just because the 40 series cards have come out now. The 30 series cards are still more than sufficient in what you'd be able to run nowadays. Dude, um, I'm still all. rocking a 20 series, you know? I, mean, that's I got it. perfectly fine for me. I got a 2070 Super, so I'm still in the 20 series. So, yeah. so I have a 2080 Super, so I'm right there with you. Yeah. And the thing runs great. I mean, yeah, that'll come. There eventually will come a time that I'll need to upgrade, but when I upgrade, I'll jump on a 30 series when they've been ridiculously discounted. Because everybody wants have, a 40 series. Have you seen the size of the 40 series? I have yeah. not. Getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I have not physically seen one, but if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but did I see that? It's going to take at least 800 watts of power for one for a 4090. Is that right? Yeah, I, don't, I didn't see the specs, but I just saw the size of it in the picture. 800 watts power. It. 800 watts power is like more than this entire PC is going to run when you actually <laughs> get it built. I read that and I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so I won't be able uh, to, get, to get a 40 series card, but... Um, it looks cool, I guess. I got I it, it looks cool from the background from a, from a, from a distance how, at the moment, I would how say. How does it how does it not just like rip the mother off? The motherboard off from the, the sheer weight. Um the they they the, <laughs> most of the motherboard manufacturers, especially the third party companies, they've been including uh these these like GPU brackets that you would mount. Let me see if I can show you over here. It's just like if you had the GPU sitting here, there's like a mount bracket that they would put here and it levels oh. up and it holds the GPU in place so it won't flop down like this. So as a bracket, you can actually hold and it'll stay here like this. The only thing I don't like about it is aesthetically, it's not cool. It's not pleasing to look at, but it serves its purpose. I just think it gets funny. Like if you've ever taken apart the Founders Editions, the, the uh, NVIDIA Founders Edition Jeep graphics cards, you would see that the graphics card is base is this big. But if you take it apart, the graphics card is literally this big. Hmm. Why, is it so much? Why is it such a difference? It's small compared to all the other GPUs. It's small. That's why I guess it just it needs that much more airflow to actually keep it cool. Uh. 
what are we doing here? All right, this goes here. Origin PC, how long do you think it'll take? Mm, that's a that's a that's a that's a very good question. I don't think I have any insight on that, PJ. I don't think you have any insight on it. I don't know. What? How long question? do you think it'll take Intel to release high performance GPUs? Because they do have GPUs, but they I, are not. I don't know. My personal belief is I think that they want to stay more in the. I wouldn't CPU. say low end market, but if they do come out with GPUs, they're trying to cater to more of the people who can't go and afford these big high end graphics cards. You know, you can get a good deal from them with what they're offering and still get some good gameplay. Um, obviously, I don't think you know right now they're ready to compete with the likes of Nvidia or AMD. With their with you know because they've been they they've been in the game for so long that, that you know that's their number one thing, but I would say eventually, and Intel will come out with a graphics card that is that is pleasing for everybody to you know to use and they'll be happy with. I would say right now, just like everything else, I wouldn't expect everything to go off like. That's like expecting Cyberpunk to be perfect the day it came out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oof. Oof. <laughs> It's just like everything else. Everything has bugs. Every game you're going to play has bugs. So to assume it's going to be perfect the day it comes out, you're just you're giving yourself a high expectation that you're just going to let yourself down super, you know, really, really hard. I go into everything, you know, I don't, I don't go into everything expecting it to be perfect. Except for your building, of course. Except for my building. My building's just like, <laughs> you know, oh. <laughs> you know. Hey. Yeah, we just don't play. Sure keep, we don't just play making games. sure I'm keeping you on your toes there. Yeah, games that we don't play games around here when it comes to that. What happened to the Big O version 3 giveaway? Yeah, that giveaway winner, Demon Slayers, was announced a yesterday. while ago. Yeah, we, yesterday? We, yeah, we got the... Uh, he, well, usually when we get a giveaway, we announce, we, we, we look out for the winner, and then we have to wait for a response. So yesterday we did receive a response from the winner. So we actually mm. are preparing that system to pack it up, get it quality control, make sure it's uh, still running properly, update it, and then ship it out to the winner. He actually gets the big O and a PlayStation Five. He gets no, no, he doesn't a big get the big. O, no, no. He gets, he gets a, he gets a big O spec gaming PC, which means that the PC that he's going to be receiving is the exact replica of the gaming system that was inside the big O V3, which was um, it, it was a full AMD setup. It was a 5950X. It had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was 128 gigs of memory. <laughs> um. Two terabyte OS drive, four terabyte storage, RTX 3090, all water cooled, but we did it in a soft tube orientation. And what I actually did was I put two reservoirs in the system because since the Big O had four independent reservoirs, I still wanted to give some type of aesthetic look of the Big O. So I used two different reservoirs, one independently for the CPU and one for the GPU. It came out pretty rad, man. And then we did the exact same UV print that we did on the Big O on the backside. Did you ever have a chance to to see the big O, Macy, did you ever see that? Mm. The big O V3, I'm saying, not the, not the... So PJ spent a little over half a year building, this was the third version, the third installment of it, uh, the big O V3, which is a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch, gaming and streaming PC, all in one that he... Oh, you know, I actually think I did see it. Unbox Therapy was the one that released the video. Yeah. So PJ... I, I would go into his office every day or so, and it was, don't talk to me, I am I am building. And we're pulling it up here on stream for everybody to see if they have not had the opportun opportunity to, to see it. It is a work of art, and it is probably a gamer's paradise. Um, but yeah, PJ spent a little over six to seven months just working at it, and it, uh, it came out incredible. So if you guys have another opportunity, there is a YouTube video uh, that is embedded into the landing page right there. And you can watch it also on Unbox Therapy's channel as well as Origin PC's channel. We have a behind the scenes version of the video as well on the making of the actual uh, unit PC. So PJ, where are we at currently with that amazing, I'm, I'm amazing Mounting build? fans. Mounting and fans. Mounting fans and hiding zip ties. So you're done with uh, your favorite part then? No. Nope. You still have to do your favorite part. Well, my favorite part's right now. I'm just wiring the fans. IQ fans are awesome, but IQ fans also have what we like to call two cables that have to go into one hub. So this this cooler here, each one of these fans that you see, 
they have an RGB hub and then a fan hub. So you have to plug it into a PWM co uh, controller and then an RGB hub. Thankfully, Corsair has a, a hub, they're called the Commander Core, that has everything in one. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually routing all the cables to where I need them, which is over here on this side, right here. And I want to put the Commander Core right here so I can have all the cables just plug right into the hub right here on this end. I already have the motherboard and everything wired up. That's already done. And then I already included the two A pins because I don't want to do that afterwards. Once I start mounting things up here at the top, whether it be a cooler or fans, it makes to get back here in this spot to plug those dual A pins a little more difficult. So what I do is before I start adding everything to the top, I plug these two cables in from the power supply and I let them hang until I get to them. That's, a, that's one of the last things. I'm not too concerned about those. So this is just further proving why I probably am not going to be great at building my own PC. Experience talking right there. Yeah, that's that's experience. I think Macy and I are on the side of yeah, we like the we like when it's done. We, we like the delivery aspect of it. I don't know how good I PJ makes fun of me all the time. I'm not really great hands on when it comes to building the PC, and he saw that also firsthand experience with me at PAX West, which was <laughs> oh, that was that was something. I definitely uh, did not expect to be hands on there. But think, you think you'll be able to build a chair now? You see, probably. Hopefully, were you paying I think attention? I, could build a chair. I was paying attention. Okay, we'll see for next time. <laughs> that's that's scary. I don't like the way that sounds. We'll see for next time. <laughs> When's next time? Yeah, we'll we'll have a next time. There'll be a next time. You think there'll be a next time? There's yeah. There's there'll be there'll be more events for us to go to. So I'm pretty sure that there'll be an opportunity for you to show me that you know how to build a a chair. Are you headed to uh, to SwitchCon, Macy? Or are you going to be headed yeah, out there? Yeah, I'll be there. You are? Oh. There is a possibility that we... Well, I know PJ will most likely be there. I am still trying to confirm if I'm going. However, this is going to be something... This is going to be something live that we're mentioning live. There will be a streaming pod. Uh, obviously, we're not tying you to the streaming pod. But if you ever wanted to stream at a convention, we will have a streaming pod at... Uh, at TwitchCon that we will have open to content creators and streamers. Oh, you're gonna, you'll get a kick I'll out of You'll get a kick out of what the hell I'm gonna be putting in that booth. <laughs> PJ PJ's working on the booth. No, but more than more so you're gonna get a kick out of the of the build that will be in the booth. That'll make you scratch your head hey. too. Can you can you spoil it or no, not at all. I cannot. I can, <laughs> that, that's the only spoiler I'll give you right there. If you, if, if you get time to actually go in there and we can set up a stream, when I set it up and show it to you, you're just going to be like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I'll check so it out. Sure. Where is TwitchCon this year? TwitchCon is in San Diego, California. I want to I reference, best, I want to reference Anchorman right now, but I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, what were you going to say? I, San, I San Diogans. <laughs> You're going to say San Diego is one of the best places? Yeah, for the Twitch cons. I've been to Long Beach, San Jose, uh, San Diego is definitely the best place. I've never been to a Twitch con yet. This will be my first. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good time. If I am going, this would be my first as well. Uh, before PAX West, the only convention I had ever had the opportunity to attend was PAX South. And that was the last PAX South before uh, they canceled it, I guess. Because apparently there is no more PAX South. Um, so yeah, PAX West, this past PAX West was a definite definite eye-opener and a really fun experience. Oh, PJ, we got Liquid House in the chat. Oh, I like this, PJ. dude. I got the opportunity we to meet Liquid House at PAX West and had the opportunity to work with him on stage uh, the last day that we were there on Monday. And um, he wanted me to show off my cable management skills. It was a little nervous. It was a little nerve-wracking for me because although I've done them live, like here, like doing this, I've never had a crowd in front of me doing it. So that was a different experience. But with him, like buggy, like right next to my ear, like dude, you got this. It's fine. Just, it's just imagine you're doing the same thing in the stream room. It's just you know, a bunch of people staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was able to knock it out. So it was, it was really cool, man. He's super cool people, and I'm, maybe like one day it'd be really dope to see if, you know, one in some way that we, you know we can collaborate and do something like an Origin PC slash Liquid House type of build. I think that would be cool. I agree. I will let the I will let you two do the building, of course, because you guys are the the masters. I will just smile and look pretty. I guess. PJ's going to TwitchCon. He just confirmed it. Ooh. I don't know about the smile. You mean the smile part you got? I don't know about the look pretty part. 
Mm. That's a. I'm working on it. That's I'm a, working uh, on it. That's a, that's an opinion. That those are that's a strong opinion. Mm. I'm working on it. <laughs> Do you get what you? This goes here. And this goes in the trash. Is there a proper? Is there a proper order of operations for the PC builds? For me, yeah. <laughs> I, I see you're doing the graphics card before you do it. I'm taking it out of the box first. My next step is actually going to be the. Uh. So yeah, what I, I do is, I... it's, I do uh, motherboard without, in, not inside the case, it's CPU, memory, um, drives that would go into it. Then you mount the motherboard, the cables for the case into the motherboard, secure those. Then I do fans, include the cooler, wire the cooler fans and controller up. Then I add the power supply and then it would be the graphics card last. Because I want to have as much available space inside the case as possible when I'm working. If I start putting yeah. everything inside the case and I got the graphics card, then I have to work around it and I don't want to have to do that. I'll just feed the cables where I need them, and then when I'm done, it's just pop, plug, and play. That makes sense. I saw you pulling out the graphics card. I'm like, I thought that. that was no, that really wouldn't be yet. I just wanted to make sure that it was <laughs> that, that everything was complete inside. I like to just open everything up. Yeah. Usually, I have everything opened up, prepared, so I don't have to open it up in between the time. That's something I learned, you know, as far as manufacturing, for you know, to make sure that you're efficient on time. You want to take everything out of the box and confirm everything is in one piece. Check off all your stuff on your inventory stuff and then build. You don't want to have to be building and then go and like pretty much what I'm doing right now, for example. Build and then take something out of the box and then pick up where you left off. Yeah, I've never built a PC from scratch. It was always kind of building on. Yeah, if you, if, like I tell everybody, if you, can, if, you, if you like Legos and you've built Mr. Potato Heads, you can build a computer. Yeah. Everything goes in one spot. So I like you can really... Correct. In the wrong space. I will find a way. It's like it's not like you can really mess it up. I feel like I would find a way to somehow still I, mess it up. Except the CPU. The CPU is sketchy. I'm always nervous about those pins. I had that thing thrown in in two seconds, man. That's the that's the least of my worries. I don't know. You ever you ever hear like the not the cracking but like the the tension as you close the CPU lid? Yep. It stresses me out every time. Oh my God. Does it stress you out? No, not, not at all. Out? I've gone into building these things. Like my, my old manager would tell me all the time, build every single build with confidence. If you're, ske if you're nervous, scared, sketchy while trying to install something, chances are you're going to break it. It's just that CPU, man. So imagine trying to put the CPU in. You're doing this. <laughs> you know, you're gonna, you're, you're, you, might, you might bend a pin or you, know, you might drop it or something. So if I grab it, I already know. Like I, In my head, I'm like, this is going in the way I want it to. And it's keyed properly. So I just... I just drop it right in. I just I, as soon as I get it leveled out, I just let it go and I let it plop right into the, into the to the slot. I don't have any no issues with them. All right, where are we going next? Right here. Now with Angry this, this is cool. You see how I have the fan set up on here like this? I put two of the fat screws in if you weren't going to put a cooler behind it, so that secures and holds the fan in place. So then I get the long screws for the AIO cooler. And I feed them through because it makes it easier to hold it in place. Because most people will be trying to hold the fan and then pushing the cooler up against it to wedge it in place so they can get the screws in. But why? Just make it easier for yourself to do this. And then once I have the, the screws, the crisscross in place, I'll take the other ones out and I'll replace them with the longer screws. Does it matter if you put it on the top or in the front? Um, in this case, you want to have it in the front. I forgot one part. Need washers. Boom. You say you say you put, you're putting in the front. What is the reason for this case being that you're putting in the front? The AIO cooler won't reach at the top. If you if you set the AIO cooler at the top, it'll interfere with the memory. Mm. Memory the memory is too large for it to be mounted at the top. But putting it at the front is no difference. You'll still get same you know, you'll still get same um, optimum airflow out of it. Especially with the directions I have the fans. You have the fans intaking, and you're exhausting out the top. So it's still going to pass cool air right through the, the radiator. I just have to make sure these things have washers on them. That is news to me. Because, like I said, I would find a way to mess up building an adult Legos PC. Not that they're adult Legos, but see that that's adult See, that, that's a cool idea. I want to build a Lego PC. I want to have a case made of Legos. Boom. Idea. I should have kept Boom. that one to myself. Damn it. Liquid House. Liquid House is in the stream. He might steal your idea. That's all right. Or, or you guys can collaborate on it. That's all right. 
PCs, PC buildings come a long way. If you ever built one in like the early 2000s, that was a nightmare. That was, it was terrible. It was awful. I remember there was a lot of, uh, at least like with the, the pre built. Listen, I had like my parents' uh, like pre built Dell home desktop and I slapped a graphics card in there. But a lot, I remember that PC had so many proprietary parts that you couldn't even change. Like, they were nightmares. A lot of parts. I would say if PC. I would say if you were to put one of those PCs in front of me, like early two thousands PCs, and then told me to put it together, I would get confused because I wouldn't know where half of those those plugs are. Now the guys oh, I work with on my team, yeah, they were they've been doing this forever. You know, this is nothing and, new uh, to them. But cable management wasn't a thing back then. No, there like, was no backplate to they, actually cable management. Yeah, they anything. never. All PCs, they were just uh, an enclosed box. People didn't look on the inside. They never opened it up. Now it's it's an aesthetic to have a window. Unless it one of those like unless it one of like the first uh, like the first generation you know boutique builders that were out at the early in the early two thousands. If it wasn't them, you know, doing the like proper cable management, you would get like you know like you said you know just a typical out of the box PC from Best Buy or something that was just thrown together. It was all about just the components. What was your first yeah. computer? My well, no, my first computer was an e machine. I mean, I, I had a family computer like with a Windows ninety five. It was I don't even remember. Windows I just remember 95. Dell's growing up. Yeah. That was the first family computer. <laughs> Windows ninety five. Wow. And then I went to Windows ninety eight. Then Windows. I think it was Windows Millennium. Yes. Like no, that. was it was a Vista. No, 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 no. It was it, X. It was, it was XP. Was it XP? No, it was Vista then XP. It was, uh, I think Vista came after it. Oh, it might have been before actually. Yeah, Vista then XP. Because everybody there was definitely a Millennium version as well. I remember everybody just hating Vista. <laughs> oh yeah, Vista. Everyone hated. It. <laughs> everybody was like, I hate it the way. Like I, I hate. Hated. Yeah, I hate it, but I like the way it looks. So people, everybody I knew would, they would have a what they what would they use like Windows. They would use um, I think it was like you said Windows Millennium or Windows two thousand, and then they would get an emulator like a skin. That made it look like it was Vista. Uh. <laughs> so you can have the look, but you still had the you still had the you still had the the power of a, an actual functioning operating system. <laughs> Whew. You ask him. Uh, all right, we got a question for you, PJ. How are you setting up the fans in this PC? In this particular setup, I set the fans up always the exact same way. So I have intake. So I'm intaking air here. I'm exhausting and exhausting. This will take. This will draw in cool air, and from here, these two will will actually exit all the uh, <clears throat> that ambient, that dead heat that would be sitting in there out of the out of the case. If this was a longer, if this was a bigger size case, then we have additional fans on this side over here. So I would actually have these intaking as well with this to bring cold air in on both sides. If it, was, if it was a water-cooled setup, then for aesthetic looks, I would flip it around because this wouldn't matter. And then I would have the top intaking and exhausting. It depends on the size of the case, but for this one, it's intake, exhaust, exhaust. So hopefully that answers your question, Endless. Vista was awful, particularly after XP had become really stable by that point. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared for Vista after that. Am I, am I dating myself? Because I don't even remember my experiences with. You are. Any of <laughs> you are because you're I am. <laughs> yeah, because if you were born, what you were born, ninety eight. Correct. Yeah, you were like know. you were like two three years old when Vista was out. You didn't experience like the endless <clears throat> pop ups, viruses just destroying PCs. And... Oh yeah. yeah, I think my experience with early Windows was probably in like elementary school, and they were like, "All right, let's go play." I don't even remember what the, the kids' games that we would play, like, to actually learn how to type. I think it was called Type to Learn or something like that in New York. Um, and that was my probably only experience with, like, PCs when I was young. <laughs> my first PC was a Commodore 64. Mm -hmm. As a kid, mine was a 64 as uh, well. And I had a I 128. Even, I don't even know what that is. I don't uh, either. Dude, Commodores were dope. <laughs> <laughs> Commodores were so dope, man. At the time that you, you know that only what, video game consoles were that? out. Excuse me. When was that? The Ooh, when, late seventies, late seventies, early eighties. Ah. Uh, like early mid. Like it? I would even saw it go as far as maybe mid eighties too. And then they they started to phase out. Was That's when, tan, like Tandys and IBM started coming out with operating systems, and they were just they were just better. But for the time, like the Commodores were, I would say, super like way ahead of their time. 
am I looking for? Where is that little wrench? I actually, my current setup is actually only my second. Like, other aside from kind of like what Macy said, my first PC, I guess, technically would be yeah. my parents' Dell that was, like, in the, 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 the living room for the whole family. But, like, my first actual PC was only 20... I work for a PC company. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expose myself here. My first PC was probably only 2017, 2018. Oh, <laughs> well. It's, it's funny. Do people even have family PCs anymore? No. I, they're I definitely like everyone just has, Yeah. It, that used to be the thing. Everyone would just have one PC in the house and everyone would use it. That's how it was for me. But for the most part, it was my brothers and I that used the computers all the time. I don't even think they were called PCs. I mean, Commodore wasn't considered a PC even though it was a personal computer. But it was just called, they just called a computer. My first PC that I had, I would say, was when I actually started working here at Origin. Because I was able to save up and like just build my first my first setup. My first setup was a, uh, wow, um, Intel, I think it was an i7 2700K. Um, I had like 16 gigs of memory, not even 16 gigs, and they were probably like running at a, it was DDR3 memory. Anything I can get my hands on, if it was just hand-me-downs or stuff that my buddies at work, like when they upgraded, they would just pass on something old to me. Um, I would use it. Um, even my GPU, whatever my GPU, I had a GTX, uh, it was an EVGA, RP EVGA with the whole thing going on with that, but it was an EVGA GTX 590. That was my first graphics card. And that thing, as it would have been cool, but I think the first real title that I started to try playing with it was Star Wars Battlefront, and the GPU just couldn't take it, and it would just get so hot it would just shut off on me. And this is when this game came out and all my coworkers are getting into it. So we got like 10 people in the chat getting ready to play. And we launch and I'm in five minutes into my PC just shuts off. I'm like, mm. why? Why me? <laughs> oh, I don't know. PCs worst. in general were rough back then. Oh, we had it so rough. <laughs> so they've come a long way. With I our... don't know how good they have it. Oh, yeah. If I go by <laughs> now, I mean, I still have, I don't still have the newest parts, but my PC at home now is a... Uh, I'm running a, a like a Ryzen 3000 series. I got an RTX 2080 Super. I got 32 gigs of Dominator memory. You know, then you got for Corsair, Cor <laughs> Cor Corsair case, Corsair keyboard, mouse, Corsair memory, Corsair cooler, Corsair drives. So Corsair fans. So I got a I got a I got a pretty little rig at my at home. But every time I look at it, I'm always like, oh man, I can get something better. But but it runs so good, I just don't see any need to upgrade it. Question for you, PJ. Will you not push the radiator heat back in with the front intake fans? No, because the top fans are going to exit all the hot air out. Remember, the top fans are pushing air out. The hot air rises. It's not going to sit here if these two fans are sucking the hot air out. RIP EVGA. I did see that announcement. I thought that was pretty crazy that EVGA and NVIDIA have parted. They've parted ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. They yeah. Did. When did that happen? A couple days uh, ago. Two days ago, I believe. Something like that, yes. So they were moving forward, not being in collaboration on cards. No GPUs. I, have a, I still have it, the GTX 770. The I, would put, I would put it away and hold on to it because that's going to be like a relic now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what to do with my old graphics cards and my old parts. You one buddy, like, you say one buddy of mine actually just, one buddy of mine just, uh, he doesn't give them up. He takes them out when he, when he upgrades and he puts a little, he gets like a little shelf and he puts it on the shelf. Oh, uh, like a little display? Yeah, like a little like re retired. And he's got the nine, I think, what is he got? The 780 Ti, 980 Ti, 1080 Ti. 2080. Yeah. He has a what else? The other one he has. Remember the Star Wars edition 1080 Ti's mm -hmm. that they made the light, the dark side and the light side ones. So you can get like all black or, uh, GTX 1080. And it had a the the box itself had like Darth Vader on it. It was pretty pretty badass. So he's got one of those too. But those never opened. The the coolest one that I've ever seen is the one that uh, our boss, our Origin PC CEO has. He has a Cyberpunk edition 2080 Ti. And I think mm -hmm. I don't I don't even think they made many of those. No. So he actually has one. He's like, oh cool, look at it. And then he puts it back in the box. 
don't want to use it. There's people out there crying knowing that. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a, lot of there's a lot of people crying knowing that. Um, alright. How, the, how are the GPU supplies? I remember, like, the last year, the GPU supplies were, like, super limited. I would say they were a little more... I would say they're still a little more available now, but I, there's still people trying to scalp you. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think they announced the price tag for the 4090 Ti's, and it'd be like something around fifteen hundred dollars. Can you imagine if a scalper got his hands on it? Oh my god. I can yeah. see those things going for like what, three three thousand dollars because somebody got Easy. their hands on it. Easily, yeah. It's just like when the PS5 came out, man. PSP people were asking like what two thousand dollars for a PS5. I was like, I would never pay that much for a video game console. Yeah. Never. I but feel like I wouldn't even buy it just for the principle of how scummy it is that they do that. Yeah. Like no matter how desperate I was, I would never. I just couldn't see myself doing that. I would, I would, I would immediately hate myself for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like, haha, I got one, and six months goes by, and your buddy bought one for five hundred bucks, and you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're better off just waiting. Absolutely. Patience is a virtue, everybody. Mm. Write that down. Write that, write, write that down and remember it. Write I think I, uh, I, I have to learn, learn that one myself sometimes. Patience is definitely a virtue. Write that down. <laughs> write that down. Speaking of writing it down, we're going to write down in the chat. Again, we're going to mention it for all maybe that have joined us late. Uh, we're going to write down in the okay. chat if I can get a link to the landing page for what we're doing here. PJ's building it. I'm not actually going to ask him for a status on the PC after this, but we're building one of the wonderful RTSs we have, which is a limited edition Macy J RTS launch with his signature on the front. And we have this following specs, which are going into the PC. I know that we have uh, a little typo on the actual website itself for the power supply, but the wonderful case you see PJ building on is a 4000D Airflow. The graphics card on these systems is an 8 gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. Got a 12900K in there for the processor. For the motherboard, we got an MSI Pro Z690 DDR A Wi-Fi DDR5. For the memory, we got 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 at 5200 megahertz. For the system cooling, we got an H100i Elite Capellix CPU cooler. For the OS drive, we got one terabyte of Samsung 870 QVO series. For the storage, we got one terabyte OPC approved, powered by Samsung. And for the power supply, PJ, correct me, which is the correct one that needs to be fixed? It is the Corsair CS750. That's the power supply that these systems will be having. Now that you say that, I'm going to mention it to our team. It's the Carol. While I do that. Carol Shelby 750. Nice. Where you at, Marcos? Thanks. You in here? Mark Marcos. He's in here. The cat savior is here. Give us a status update, PJ, on where we at with the build. Plugging in the Commander Core. This is the hub that your, all your fans and RGBs are being plugged into. And then when this is done... Then I have to wire all that. Yay, because that's fun. Fun for you. Yes, fun for me. Mm -hmm. I find peace in it. Yes, I do. I do. It's just weird. Call me weird. I don't know. You can call me weird all you want. I just, it is. And people look at me like, are you serious? And I'm like, oh, this is the best part for me, man. I love every second of this. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> me just ready to plug and turn on the PC. Oh, I love the wiring. It's my favorite part. I guess it would be the. I guess the only thing that does suck about doing this when you do when you get extreme camera management, like as OCD as I get, is if something's not right or you don't double check your parts before you start installing everything, and you get all those wires nice and neat and tucked, and you're like, oh, this is the dopest build I've ever done, and you go to power it on, and you got a burnt cable out someplace or something's not plugged in right or you. She screwed something in that's causing it to short. Now you have to. Now you got to figure out where it's coming from. So then you end up taking everything back apart. Now you're like, you know, that that's what happens to most guys. That they'll start cable managing the system and they get into it, but something goes wrong, 
And when they go to correct it and fix it, they get so frustrated that they have to go and put everything back together. They just, they just shove everything back in there and just close the panel up. They're like, I'm not dealing with this again. Not me. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Out of sight, out of mind. That's, I, I, I said the same uh, concept the other day. It's like, let's, let's, for example, Macy, let's say you go buy a brand new Tesla, right? You've been looking for a Tesla, you go buy a brand new Tesla Model X. You're not going to get in the car and see a bunch of cables hanging out from under the dashboard, are you? Mm -mm. Correct. It's the same thing. If you invest a lot of money in something like this, especially like an Origin PC, you want your money's worth. Mm -hmm. So I want to give you your money's worth. I don't want you to come over here, and, but I don't want to throw a computer together and then charge you an obscene amount of money for you to turn around and be like, this is what I paid for? You could have went to Walmart and bought a computer. But we don't want that. So I want to give every customer the, you know, the actual experience of like if you were, you're buying a high-end quality product, I want to give you that high-end quality result. That, that's what you deserve. That's what you pay for. And that's what I'm more than happy to, to give you. Yeah. No, can confirm. Again, I was like, I was checking, like testing you guys with the back panel and checking for myself just to see if all the hidden parts are nice and clean. And sure enough, they were. Oh, that's the one thing I want everybody to look at. So the fact that you even, <laughs> the fact that you even opened it up to like, it's like, hey, let me see what they did. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're going to get a kick out of that. That's literally the, one of the first things I did. I looked inside. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, I have to see the inside. Pop that back panel out. It's great. That's my first question to everybody when I go on uh, on Instagram and I look at custom builds. They, somebody will post a picture of, oh, my first build. Check it out. What do you think? And I'm like, what does the back look like? They will never, <laughs> they will never take a picture of the back end of their computer. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -mm, I'm not showing that to anybody. <laughs> this is where it gets kind of fun. Now we get we got a question things. from Anne in chat. When are you doing a giveaway? I'm trying to think if there's any current active giveaways that we think, have. I don't think so. I believe there is nothing currently active, but always keep an eye out for anything on the horizon. Uh, I cannot share any information on it, what we do have planned, but there is always conversations going on about giveaways. Yeah, as of right now, we, we had, a, we had um, um, Intel Gamer Day giveaways for the... <laughs> It was two desktops, two laptops, and those already ended. We had the big O giveaway. We had, um, and then what was the other one that we just did too? Oh, the Intel, um, the Intel 12900K Rise, launch. The Rise, Rise and Shine. And Inspire. That was the we little man, the little man giveaway. So yeah, there was right. a lot of them that we just had. It's just, you just like I tell everybody, just stay tuned, keep following us, and you'll see that we do giveaways. I don't want anybody to even think that these are skeptical or we, you know, we BS on these. We don't BS on them. I mean, if I had, if we BS'd on live on, on giveaway PCs, I don't think I'd have a job. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, there was actually some drama around like sketchy giveaways and stuff like that. Yeah, we don't do that here, man. We say yeah. we're gonna give away, give something away. We give it away. I think the the, the one that was the coolest one was the so far for me was the Intel when the twelve nine hundred K launched. We just uh, we finally got a winner for that PC, and it was, was unfortunate is that the winner lived in Mexico, and there was a lot of issues back and forth going through customs. Mm -hmm. So once we got that squared away, the guy posted a picture up of his system, and he was just like, "Oh, thank you, Origin PC." You know, so you could see, just you know, your average everyday person who just follows us. You don't have to buy a PC from us. All you got to do is just enter the sweepstakes. Chances are you can win. You're not going to win everything, and just because you didn't win the last one, keep trying. Don't let it discourage you. You might be lucky one day, and you know what? You end up with a five thousand dollar PC just sitting at your front door, just because you signed up for something. <laughs> How cool is that? You know. That goes. Here. I am stepping away to go to the bathroom very quickly, so I will be right back. I demand you take us with you. No, I'm kidding. I love the sound <laughs> of the zip ties. <laughs> Oh, ASMR? You want to lay it's, ASMR? It's, it is, it, yeah. <laughs> I was doing that at the uh, at the Intel uh, PAX West when I live on stage. They were building, they were teaching uh, the influencer how to build a PC, and it, Liquid House told them to click the memory into the system, and the sound got was so high quality. You could hear the guys in the back <laughs> on the mic. You could hear the guys in the back on the on our on the little bugs that we had in our ears. They were going, "Oh my God, that was the best sounding click we've ever had." <laughs> Yeah, those, those things are so oh, dude, it is. I thought about it. I was like, maybe we should just do an ASMR build one day. Just don't say anything. Just turn up the mics on everything and just, <laughs> just go to town. Yeah, the RAM, the RAM click gets me every time. 
We can just do this real quick, just be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is satisfying. So does that case have like spots specifically meant for ties to tie it? There's so some like... spots. There's they have some. It's really cool because sometimes in these inner lips right here, they actually have little loops to actually zip tie in this little section. That's what I'm doing right now. Once I wire this thing up, I'm gonna have these inner cables right here tucked in. And then it's just gonna go back into the PC and I'm gonna actually hide them behind these top fans. When I'm done, you won't even see them. I take all like all my all the inspiration and all my ideas from builds come from cars. Yeah? Yeah. That you know it's funny that you mentioned that. I was actually saying that I have a friend who's obsessed with cars. I never got into cars, I never really saw it. But the moment I started building PCs myself, then I, I kind of started to understand the his, uh, the appeal of car mods. Oh yeah, they go hand in hand. If you're yeah. if you're a car guy and you're into PCs too, then definitely this is up your alley, man. Except cars are way more expensive. So. <laughs> I would say nowadays, yeah, you'd be, it's it's pretty hard to argue, you know. <laughs> this, these things can, you know, PCs can go anywhere to like you can. I would say like the least expensive brand new PCs got a, you know, at a good deal would probably be like what like two thousand dollars, and then everything up there is like the world is your oyster, you know, like. You can you can spec up to at least a ten thousand dollar PC if you, I, if you wanted to. It gets that to be crazy. Fair, do you remember how much PCs used to cost in the nineties? Oh they yeah, they were ridiculously expensive. expensive. Yeah, and you were like, getting like a hundred and twenty eight megs and hundred and twenty eight meg storage drive, and you're like, oh, this is the biggest drive ever. It wasn't even a gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> but like, not even just how much less you're getting out of it. Just like if you compare the value of today's PCs. Mm -hmm. Inflation is ridiculous. And account for inflation, it was it was still like really expensive. Home PCs were. If you go and you factor a three thousand dollar PC back in the early nineties to what it would be now, if you're spending like ten, eleven thousand dollars <laughs> on a computer. Yeah, with, pretty much. Yeah. With not even fantastic specs. Yeah. Back with floppy disks. So. Oh, floppies! Three and a half floppies. I used, I used to have that like like a floppy disk case that you would just kind of click all the disks in. Oh, nice. Never had anything like that. No? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Not that. That would be definitely be cool to have. I gotta... Come on, guys. Get in there. Just go in. Go to your home. There you go. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. What is going on here? All right, we are back. Sorry, my stomach was not happy from lunch. But we're back. I came back to Florida to get some Chick-fil-A and the Chick-fil-A did not like me. So, how are we doing? I heard car conversation. Uh, just comparing the, 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 like, just a comparison of how PCs nowadays can be just as expensive as cars. Like a low end mm -hmm. car, I'm not saying, I mean, if you wanted, you can get like sub twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a on a computer, but then you, that's like going right. major overkill on certain parts. Like I know there's some quadro cards that go for like four or five thousand dollars, but those are for more like pro line systems. You're not going to go find your average person going to build, going to buy a quadro PC and saying just just to like just to brag. Hmm. That is interesting to me. Okay. Yeah, not a, the PJ is definitely the car guy. If you guys ever were wondering. I'm trying to figure out if my motherboard can fit two MVME SSDs, but I've been staring at this motherboard information. I'm starting to feel dumber than I thought. This motherboard in particular? Is that the question? Or what kind of motherboard do you have? I mean, you can easily answer that question just looking at your, like at the user manual or the box itself. It can tell you how many drives it'll hold. I never thought the ASMR aspect of things would include PC building. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Liquid House and PJ ASMR PC building stream. Gotta have it. In. Gotta have it. In. Let's do it. There's definitely a market for it. <laughs> There's definitely a market for it. <laughs> when I would do some streams at my house, I go on my, like, try to, like, just experiment, like, on um, building a PC on Twitch. I would just throw some, like, uh, some free advertise like free advertisements is called like no zero copy like free copyright no copyright uh lo-fi hip-hop and just leave that playing in the background and build 
And all two people that watched, they were happy. I'm telling you. <laughs> all two people. No. All two people. They were stoked, man. <laughs> It says three times M.2 S.A.T.A. P.C.I.E. But I keep thinking it's saying it takes three lanes in the bus, not three ports. P.J., would you know? No. Nope. Nope. I have to, I have to do a little research on it to give you an answer. Unfortunately, can't do that at the moment. Um. <laughs> What'd you say? PC's looking clean already. Yes. Yeah, it's getting there, see? I already took, I tucked everything and I just threw it back into the front. Now I'm gonna grab all those cables I shoved in the front, tidy those up, and then hide those. is nice with the red i know I you're saying say, i was i was gonna say that's really nice yeah yeah the backdrop is looking really it, nice it's actually watching. it's actually three-dimensional backdrop right i can yes. see the light reflecting on it it's cool. yes it is a three-dimensional light drop backdrop that is credit to alex on the production team I know. <laughs> so do you have a sh i'm assuming Macy, do you have a stream today as well, or did you take time out from your stream to join us uh, here today? I took time out. Nice, dude. That was cool. I, yeah, I spent the whole morning putting a, editing a video for YouTube. Uh. I just... What are your thoughts on... Uh, I know we're on, we're on all platforms today, so what are your thoughts with what happened, I guess, with Twitch and their announcement today? Oh, that's I guess it came out. What, it came what, out overnight. That's new. What which one? The Twitch? revenue split or the uh... the gam? Not the gambling one. The revenue. Well, oh, we, can the... Talk, we can we can hit on both. There was the gambling announcement, and there was also the the revenue split. Gambling they, announcement. They Explain that to me because I'm not too. Uh, they they just they prohibit certain types of gambling on Twitch. I thought that was always prohibited. No, no streamers were getting sponsored by gambling companies. Oh, okay, okay. I understand what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Now it's not uh, permitted so, at all? Uh, there's some forms of gambling that's permitted, but uh, like the slots style is not. Yeah, so essentially the only thing that's left that you can now um, stream in terms of gambling is if it's a... If the site has an, is owned by like, you, in the U.S. Like if they're actually physically in the U.S., you can stream on that gambling site. But if it's not... And you can't legally like gamble on it in, in your state, then you're not allowed to stream it anymore. But essentially, they tried to just get rid of all gambling. As for the revenue split, how are your? What are your thoughts? Um. So I don't think I maybe I misunderstood, but I don't think it's gonna affect me. It sucks for the newer streamers. Right. Um. But I think like the first hundred thousand that you make will have the normal. 70 30 split and then after that it'll be 50 50 and then it resets oh annually. wow that is, so, is that is that grant what like for for origin for og twitch streamers does that affect you guys too or your grandfather um, into what it was before it, it only it really only affects you if you earn over 100k so it's only for like the biggest of streamers who have that 70 30 split ah okay um but expect it once you, if, if you're if you're on the rise and you're getting there expect that to happen so, yeah. Oh, that's wild. You dude. need to. Yeah, I don't. I don't earn that much. Which. Uh, so it doesn't affect me. It's only the big, like the biggest of the biggest streamers. The big boys. Yeah. Well, that's the goal for the end of the day, right? But, to, to have. I mean, like, the, to get you know, content not content, but you know, to have that many subs and have that many yeah, followers. The, it just sucks the, 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 think, 50 50 split oh my god dude that break my heart the right biggest now. thing that sucks is they it's just for newer streamers they don't even have the like the opportunity to ever get a 70 30. right it only it especially sucks just because it's amazon that owns it and amazon owns twitch now yeah oh, oh wow. is that 
That's why it's Twitch. It used to be just in TV before it, before Twitch. Yeah, they've owned. Yeah, they own the uh, show. It sucks from a company like Amazon to do that. They make enough money, you know. I mean, you think that that would be like the last thing for them to do. Yeah. Does Does YouTube do the same thing, or do they have like a different format? I think YouTube is a seventy thirty split. But it's it's I think it's much harder to get into the partner program for YouTube. I got well, I got in there. I got in early, so pretty much anybody could be a partner back then. It's funny you say that because as of yesterday, they actually did release new information about getting into the partner program you now can get into the partner program um with youtube shorts uh youtube shorts you can get into the partner program now and they're also being accounted into i guess your 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 public hours which they previously had not been in your public hours so they did actually make some updates yesterday which were pretty cool to their program yeah at the end of the day, I still like Twitch as a live streaming platform over YouTube. Um, but it does suck, so it feels like a step back. For yeah. Content creators. That'd be heartbreaking, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, for content creators that are trying to come up and they hear that news, it's just, it just it kind of like a mm -hmm. gut punch to them. They're like, is it really worth doing this? I mean, yeah, 20% is a huge chunk. Um, Amazon even has a streaming platform as a service on AWS, so you can spin up an instance of Twitch, per se. Okay. PJ, where are we at progress-wise? Uh, almost finished uh, wiring up the Commander Core. And then plug in the power supply and the GPU. Oh, and then the... The uh, Elite Cooler Upgrade Kit, which I got right here. Not too long. I would say less, much less than, what time is it right now? I feel like another 30, 45 minutes, probably be done. Yes, it is. Yeah, I know. All right, Marco. <laughs> Not Marcos, Jesus. Marco. Marco. All right, Alchemist, 024. Just looking at some things on my end over here. Ooh, a little bit of light, pink light to add for some effect to PJ's building. You probably have to shut out the bright light or dim the brighter light to see the more of the colors. <laughs> Who needs music with all the sound effects you guys make in here? <laughs> we are the music. We are the entertainment. No, I got Alex and Marcos over here going bing, 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 bing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. We'll go back to Macy. We'll talk. So let's talk Rainbow Six. How are you feeling currently at this point where the where, with where the game is? Um, Rainbow Six. I personally, this is how I've my experience has been. Whenever I played it, the community was very toxic. But that also, oh, yeah. that's not anything I'm not used to because I come from a community that is also very toxic. I mean, overall, I still love the game. I, I want to preface by saying I still love the game. I think it's great. Uh, it's a one-of-a-kind game. There's no other game that does what it does, um, which is why it's still doing so well. Uh, cheating is a massive problem, though. Uh, Ubi is struggling to maintain the cheating. They actually did a, a new season came out just recently, and they actually did a really good job curbing the cheating. It's, it's, it's tamed, and the game is playable. But there was a time where it's just, if, especially if you're the top-ranked player, like every game you're getting, Cheaters, it's, it's tough. Was it like the? Would it be like the same type of cheating that they do like on a, 
on uh, on Call of Duty, like Warzone and stuff, that people just like auto aim and stuff like that. So yeah, it's know? just like aimbots, walls. Jeez. Um, oh, shoot through walls. And, yeah, they'll shoot through walls. Oh and, wow! Like, and the thing is, siege is is all about destruction. Like so much of the map is destructible. You can shoot through all the floors, the ceilings, the walls. Okay, so shooting through the so, wall is fair, but they're gonna. It was to the point that they would shoot through any wall and just automatically get you. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Pretty oh much. no! Like, that yeah, sucks. you can't really fight back. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, they did this season though. It's been it's been good. They they've curbed it significantly. It's still some popping up here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, on PC it was I think that was one of the biggest problems it's, it's had. Uh, it does have toxicity, but that, I feel like that's every yes that's every, every competitive game. Every game has got toxic. it. Literally, uh, yeah. Even I don't know. It's like even uh, what was it? Fall Guys. It's like a family party game people yes. are cheating and being toxic um i feel like you can't really escape it especially in competitive games i'm pretty sure even on among us they were cheating on that too yeah there's cheaters in among us i do remember. <laughs> what's the point i don't get it you're taking the you're That's taking funny. all the fun out of the game yeah what are you doing that i, I remember uh, i remember when that game came out i was i was rooming it with like it was what a former co-worker of mine and he got that game and not by any fault that like he was trying to do it intentionally, but he would get so into it. It's like 1, 2 in the morning, and I'm half asleep. And I could just hear him through his room, No! You're sus! <laughs> you're sus! It's you! I know it's you! And I'm going through his room, and he looked at me and said, Oh, my bad, dude, I'm sorry. So I'm just getting really into this game. <laughs> no! You're sus! Yeah, like real loud, No! You're sus! I'm like, Oh, wow, what's going on? I thought he was getting into a fight with somebody, and I'm walking out the room like, You good? And he's like, Oh, this game. This game's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like, interesting. That game came out, and it, nobody played it. And then, like two years after it launched, it just blew up like crazy. It was weird. I don't think I've ever seen a game really blow up like that. I've seen movies. So long after <laughs> launch. I've seen plenty of movies do that. Yeah. Flop movie flops, and then they put it on Netflix or Amazon or something, and then now it's the number one movie. <laughs> like people now that what is it? Morbius is on Netflix. Everybody's like, oh, it's a good movie. I'm like, no, nah, it wasn't. Don't justify it just because. Like, <laughs> Don't justify because it's free now on Netflix. It's, like it's viewed for the irony, not for the entertainment. There you go. I like that. <laughs> I like that better. More bias. More bias. <laughs> Imagine cheating in a kids game. No, I. There, it's true. There definitely is people. Yeah, there's that people cheat. that cheat. There's people that cheat. I want to say the most toxic game to ever play would be GTA. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a Nick Rick. That game's yeah. so bad, dude. It's but that's the but it's that. fun. The funny thing about that game is, is just that that is the point of the game. They never shied away from saying that. I think they just started adding all these safety features is because people were like, oh, I can't even move my uh, move my shipments from point A to point B without somebody killing me. I'm like, well, when you bought the game, you knew that that's what, those were the rules. If I see I you, if I see you coming down the street and you got cargo and. The game is allowing me to blow your cargo up. I'm gonna blow your cargo up. Now I never heard, I never played it, but I hear Rust is really bad. I never played stuff. Rust. I never played Rust either. Yeah, I think it's like a base building game, and people just sabotage your base all the time. Oh. <laughs> so like adult Minecraft? No. <laughs> yeah. So, now I've never played it, so I wouldn't know. Exactly. Some like Minecraft Minecraft graphics. As somebody who's not even in the community, I just hear how notoriously bad it is uh, that game. <laughs> Those lights are very, very, very pretty. Russ is built with that energy. Shrek on Netflix. If you don't watch it every night, you're doing it wrong. It's funny you should say that because I was in uh, when I was in Colorado this past week. We were we kept planning on watching Shrek, us, my myself and our friends, and then we just every time we went to watch Shrek, we ended up getting stuck watching The Office. So <laughs> we started off going, "Yeah, we're gonna watch Shrek," and then we ended up at The Office. And I, I've, I've never really actually watched The Office. It's the first time I back to sat down and watched The Office. I was going to say, speaking of The Office, if you, uh, I saw an article that if you play The Last of Us, they brought The Office Office in the game. If you play The Last of Us? 
Yeah, if you play the new version of The Last of Us and you go into one of the buildings, the office, the same office that's from the TV show, is all like run down and beat up, but it's the exact same office from no the TV way. show. Yeah. Huh. By the way, I like yeah. that extended barrel on the power drill. Thank you. It's actually really yeah. convenient. <laughs> I try, to tell everybody, I try to tell everybody, but everybody you see, if you oh. watch anybody's streams, they're using screwdrivers. I'm like, you guys are crazy. I use a drill, man, all day. Well, usually people don't have that extended barrel, and you can't just put an entire drill inside the piece. Oh, you're talking about this piece here? Is this all you need? Yeah, yeah, that's the piece. Yeah, just go. you can go to your local hardware store and buy that. Yeah, most people don't have that, so. And you're not going to put an need, entire man. drill into the PC. <laughs> I would. I mean, <laughs> I was always on the screwdriver method. It sucks though when you drop a screw and then get buried under the motherboard. Oh yeah. Don't I know that very well? I've dropped screws on the floor and we have a gray concrete floor out in manufacturing. Oh no. And the second you drop it, it's a black screw. It's like it just disappeared <laughs> into the abyss. Like where could it have possibly gone? You know, it's like a gr it's a gray floor. Yeah, I saw PJ. Uh, we were at PAX West. We were doing takedown. And the uh, the team that was helping us with takedown, they saw him put the drill together, and they were like, "Oh my God, he cocked it like like you said, like extended magnet." That, that, that he, he cocked it like a gun when he was putting it together too, because it has an extended mag. Oh, and I got it. I had it taken apart, so I had it sitting like this in my toolbox. So I grabbed it and I just threw it together and just went. <laughs> they were like, oh, look at you cocking it up like it's ready to go. Like, you're going to shoot somebody. I'm like, oh, no, I don't know about that. But, <laughs> but I like what you're thinking there. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Is it short than long? Yeah, I got it right. All right, while we have a second here, for those that are new to the chat, I'm going to bring it up again. Talk about it while we have some, some time. If you guys are not familiar, we are currently doing the RTS stream live build with PJ behind the camera, Macy himself. Macy is one of our amazing content creators and partners with Origin PC. We decided to do an RTS system to give back to his amazing community and the Origin PC family. And we can post that landing page in the chat uh, if you type, I believe it's exclamation point macy j r t s is it and also yes macy j r t s and also Moobot is posting it every every now and then where you can go and visit the web page and see what everything we are doing here this is a limited edition run of systems that we are doing that is fully branded from the front and the back panels with macy j his both his signature and some of his branding that you guys can get your hand on these are shipping in about one to two to three business days with free SU, free US ground shipping, and as always with every Origin PC purchase, 24 seven lifetime US based support. You guys can go ahead and check out that landing page. It has all the specs of the PC that is currently being built. And if you do purchase this current RTS, what you would be getting. And if you do wanna fully customize it further, you could always customize it on that landing page as well. Just do be advised that the shipping time will vary with the more updates you make to the customization but yes go ahead and check out that it has a biography about macy it has the information about the pc and one lucky person that i mentioned this actually on our most recent last live build we did one lucky person will get their this current live build that pj is making will get their hands on this one the other units of the live builds have already been configured and are ready to go but we always keep one to the side to do live on stream so you guys can see the whole live build process. So you guys, one lucky person will get the amazing PJ RTS, Macy, or Macy J RTS built by PJ, I should say. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I have, I, have, I have Restream up and I don't think I saw that in any of our chats. So who who said if I who said that? Nobody said it was in chat. It could just been somebody random that we know. You know, I mean, anybody. Oh yeah, someone random that we know with the three people over there in the office all next to each other, right? 
Yeah. Well, I, look, hey, I don't have anybody next to me. Look, everybody's maintaining their distance. This yeah. is my circle. Six, my six circle. Feet apart. Do I still like 2K23? Yes, I still. I mean, to be fair, I haven't played it in a week because I was in Colorado. So at this point, yes, currently I still like it and I'm still able to do my own stream on the game because I don't hate it yet. <laughs> We're still we're still enjoying 2K23 for my for my personal channel. Yes. Hate, hate hates a strong word. Hate is, hate is a strong word. Dis, CJ. Dislike. We don't, we don't hate anybody. We don't hate anybody. You right? could dislike. I don't I don't I don't hate anybody. I don't think I dislike anybody either. It's all love in the Origin PC family. That goes mm. like. That goes like this. Uh, <laughs> Utter focus in PJ's eyes. The determination right now. Can see how many, it. How many PCs you build? Me? Oh. Woo! I think, as crazy as I think, I want to, I, I, I want to say I'm around a thousand. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> because you got to, I mean, I started in manufacturing, so manufacturing was build, you're done, grab another one, build, and we were required to build X amount of systems a day. And I was in the manufacturing area for at least, for five years. So take all the builds that I did for five years, then I started building systems for marketing, moved into marketing department, then I started building the special PCs for marketing. Some of the one-off builds, yeah, I'm up there. I don't want to say thousands, but I'm in the high hundreds. I, I feel like you definitely have hit a thousand. It's hard to say. I just know I built a lot of PCs. I just think a thousand. So you started. You, you started building in two thousand nine. Two thousand thirteen. Oh. Yeah, two thousand nine. Hmm. Two thousand nine is when Origin started. So they only had. They, I think their their team of people was. They had like a handful of people, maybe like less than like five people on the team, and they only had like one or two assemblers at the time. When I started, there was we were still a very small company, but they were making a name for themselves already. So that was already four years in, and um, they were already progressing, but still, they, was just, they, they had maybe less than five people on the team building computers. And there was no assembly line. We would, grab, we would, we would source the parts, we would grab them, and then just drag, pile them up on one little crate, and then take that crate and drag it over to our desk. That's how we would build it first. Now it's, it's pretty cool. You know, we have a full assembly line. We have a squad of a lot. You know, we have a nice squad of assemblers. You know, they, it's, 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 it's amazing to see how much they've progressed over the years. And to sit back and actually be able to, to see it, it's, it's another cool experience, too. Some people just walk into it or just know, like, hey, look, you know, you started from here and now you're here. But to actually sit back and see it for yourself has been pretty amazing. See, it's, I see a question in chat from Guzmo or Guzmo. I'm not sure which one it is. What are we building there? I just, on my personal channel right there, put it in the chat for you. Thanks to Moobot's amazing link. Uh, we are doing a live build of Macy J's RTS. RTS stands for ready to ship. We have released a limited edition run of RTS branded PCs with Macy J's branding and his signature and a really cool pre-built computer that can run a lot of good things. A lot of good things, I could say, so myself. But yeah, this is uh, PJ's hand building, one of them himself for the stream for everybody to see what the building process is like and as always his amazing uh his wiring skills over there really neat and concise in the back macy oh, j yeah, co-signed this <laughs> macy j yeah macy j co-signed on the uh on the the wiring pj's wiring i can co-sign for that oh yeah i've been meaning to ask uh every time people ask me is it a pre-built or a custom but it's like a custom PC that was pre-built for me. It's a custom. I don't know how to answer. It's, it's, <laughs> as, as, when people ask, is it a custom or a pre-built? You tell them it's a custom pre-built. Yeah, that's basically what I've been saying. That's all you got to <laughs> tell them. Because I picked the parts. I This is what I wanted, and then they built it for me. It wasn't, yeah. you know. I feel like calling it a pre-built is misleading. It's a pre-built really would be a website that you would go to and put the PC together, and all they have is like A, B, or C. Yeah, yeah. Like I, you like pick which one do you want, good, better, or best, and then that's a pre-built because they're just repetitively building those things. Uh, Corsair Vengeance PCs, those are pre-built PCs because you don't get to pick a custom setup from those. You know, 
And then if you go to the origin PC line, that's like getting, like I'd say, like, it's like getting a vengeance on steroids. Because now you're get, you, know, you get the ability to pick what you want out of it. You could pick the color. Do you want UV print, not UV print? You want a glass etch? You know, it's, it's how do you want to water cool it? It's just how crazy do you want to go with the system at that point? I think you called it right. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a custom pre-built system. Yes, and to also not confuse you, yeah, you got a you got a different custom pre-built pre-built system, the one that you have in your yeah. In your this is current this setup. is just this is just like a, if I would say like one step down to everything you have for your personal PC, but still is a banger of a setup. Banger of a setup. But yes, custom I mean, pre-built. Where is that? I was just going to say, yeah, it's, uh, it's still fantastic. Get this one cable here. Nope, that doesn't go with that. That goes here. I'm always accepting. Oh, look, one just happened to, uh, you know, ship to my house on my deck. I wonder how that happened, though. I wish. <laughs> but... I do, I do want to upgrade my setup, my personal setup here in the near future. With for for yeah. gamers and streamers, that's really important for you guys because that's 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 upkeep. You know that you have to maintain your, you have to keep your gear up to date. So, I mean, that doesn't say for everybody. For people who are just starting out, I get it. You know, it's difficult for you to do. But for people who are like already in the midst of it, you don't want to be running on old hardware because yeah. you have, you have Even to. Go ahead. I, even for editing, it's been fantastic. My the PC I had before, it would take twenty five to thirty minutes to uh, render a ten minute video. Now it takes like six or seven. Oh, so awesome! Crazy. That gives you a lot more free time to actually create more content because you're not sitting around waiting for something to just finish up. Actually, I feel, I, technically, I feel like I have less free time because every time it took 30 minutes to render, I knew I had nothing else I can do. It's like a mandatory 30-minute break. There's a man. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, oh, now, now you're like, it's like, like it's it done? In six minutes, yeah, and now it's like, shit, I got to start working. I have to start doing other things now. <laughs> there goes my 30 minutes break. Yeah. We'll be like, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah in, a, in a, an aggressive yeah you're welcome for that fix now you have more time to do things no kidding. i hope you appreciate sarcasm <laughs> <laughs> all right second to last second to last oled the uh, oled screen mm. See, the cool thing about the Capellix cooler is you can buy it in two different ways. If you bought, for anybody who's watching our stream, if you bought an Elite Capellix and it has this little screen on it, I don't know if anybody can see that. Are you watching me over here? Is that you? No. This thing. If you guys have bought this type of cooler, I got way too close to the screen, but it has this little Elite. It says called Elite Capellix. You can actually upgrade to the OLED screen. You, don't, you can buy it separately, which is the Elite Upgrade Kit. And what you do is... You essentially just, you get a little hex kit and you can disconnect this from the actual hub. There's a plug port in the back. Let me see if Alex can zoom in. There's like a plug port in the back. So you can literally take this thing off and then buy the OLED screen and put the OLED screen in its place and plug it right in. And then you could actually custom put different GIFs and hubs. You had that on your, on your system, correct, Macy? Yeah, I do. I do, yeah. So you can change that out to whatever you want. I think we preloaded uh, the Origin O on there. Mm -hmm. Alex, uh, Alex, uh, our producer back here, he's the one who created all those gifts. Yeah, no, I kept it the exactly how it was. I haven't changed it. Oh yeah, the we setup was great. Yeah, you guys did the the lighting. Perfect. Yeah, when we well, once we once we find out what your colors are, then we go. And that that's what we try, we try to cater the system around exactly what your colors are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want I didn't want to change it. I literally perfect. I left it exactly as it is. Nice to. I should know. mention Macy. I actually forgot. <laughs> Never had a chance to update you on uh, update you on it. So if there was ever a uh, if a keyboard has there been a Corsair keyboard that has showed up at your house recently? Mm, no. Okay, so you should be expecting one. Just surprise. We're doing. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a, a Corsair keyboard headed your way. Um, 
that the Corsair team, obviously we, I work hand in hand with the Corsair team. So you are getting as part of one of our partners, a brand new Corsair keyboard. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cause it was going to just randomly show up and you're probably gonna be like, why is there a random keyboard <laughs> here? So. I wouldn't question. I'll, I'll keep my eye for you. Oh, free keyboard? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> It must be for me. So are the heat sinks obsolete now? Do we, do we not use like CPU fans anymore? I think I don't see them anymore. No, people still use them. There's some people that still swear over them over AIO coolers. Yeah. Uh, my previous PC had a heatsink. I always got flack for it. I wouldn't give. I mean, a couple years ago, I probably would have been a guy to give you flack for it. But now, since I've seen comparisons that some AIO, some air coolers actually do perform, like spot on with AIOs, if not some of them could be better. I just, you know, it's more of a personal preference. Just like the, it's like the argument I used to have with everybody all the time, like Android is better than Apple or Apple is better than Android. I got tired of it so much. I'm like, dude, if you like it and it works for you, then Go to you know, then use what you use what you're comfortable with and what you're happy with. <laughs> you got the guy back over here in the <laughs> corner. Hey, Android sucks. <laughs> oh wait, correction. He said both of them do. <laughs> Go buy yourself a Windows phone or a Nextel. I'm using my Oh, he said he's using a BlackBerry. Oh, <laughs> BlackBerry. Ain't that <laughs> well? Ain't that ancient? I had a BlackBerry. Never had. Does that a make me kind? Of, does that make me kind of relevant? I've never. Still too young? I've never had a BlackBerry. Me neither. I feel like Bla wasn't BlackBerry for like the businessmen and. Yeah, but yes, I had it for BlackBerry Messenger because I was a. I don't know, Jappy. I guess I was. I was. I was a Long Island kid. Everyone that had a lot. Everyone had Blackberries at my school, so I felt pressured to get a BlackBerry. I'm old enough to have. You're not cool unless you have a BlackBerry. The, the cool phone for me was the Sidekick. Oh, the T-Mobile Sidekick was a yeah, very where it, like, good phone. Yeah, where it flip around. It, people only liked it just because it flipped around in that unique way. It was a good phone for its time, man. It I just think it was way too... I mean, eventually it just became something that was way too bulky to put in your pocket. Sometimes I think my phone. I have a... I got a 14. Uh, I'm not 14, a 13. And even the 13, I downgraded because the 8 Plus that I had was twice the size of this. And even now I'm like, this might... This might be a little bit bigger than I wanted. And I still have a tendency to misplace it and walk away from it. The other day, one of the, thankfully, one of the coworkers was like, hey, you left your phone next to the toilet. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool, thanks, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'll buy you lunch, man. You just saved me like $1,000 for not taking my phone. That goes Noctua back. Master Race here. Really no reason to replace it. Noctua. What is it, Noctua? Noctua makes awesome fans, dude. Octua makes very, very good fans. PC fans? Yep. Ah. Noctua came in handy in a couple of cases when we were building Big O. Because they were the only ones that made certain size fans that I needed to cool uh, some of the, the consoles off. The more you know, the more you learn. Always learning. With, every day is a learning opportunity with PJ. And the I would say the entire Origin PC team. <laughs> you can't go wrong with good fans. I feel like good fans are underrated because my past PC was so incredibly loud. I just remember the thing humming constantly. Dude, oh, dude! I, my mic and I have a. That's yeah. It's one of the best parts about this uh, PC upgrade is just how much quieter. There's a server in my lab right now that our that our uh, validation testers are testing, and it happens to be right next to my desk, and I. The fan on that thing is so obnoxious. <laughs> I keep on telling, I was like, dude, I just want to, I, I, like my coworker, my other tech, she says she works with me. I was like, this system is so annoying right now. I was like, I want to punch the system. She was like, punch it. I, I punched the back grill. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't help. <laughs> oh, dude. That goes here. This will go back up. Wait. And this will the zip up. ties. The favorite part. The zip ties. Nope, gotta cut that one. 
Found out my motherboard does have extra NVMe slots, but only 3.0. Totally fine since I currently have HDD, so the difference will be massive. Yep, your system will fly like the wind once you switch those things. Yeah, our hard drives obsolete now. HDDs? I don't see too many people using them so much. Even in the builds, I mean, to be fair, I'm sur I'm sure that there's customers in our manufacturing area that still buy HDDs. But in the marketing department, obviously, you know, like we're trying to, with our reviews, we're always trying to post out like the best of the best. So in that sense, I don't think I'd ever use an HDD again. And everything that I use in, my, in the systems that I'd be building are either NVMEs or SSDs. And I even think SSDs are slowly starting to phase out. Really? Wait, for, for what? Because the NVMEs are just taking over. Oh, okay. They're, they're twice as fast, man. It's crazy. I'll never forget when I first upgraded to my first SSD. It was actually when Battlefield 4 came out. I didn't even have an uh, SSD. I had an SSHD. That was like a hybrid. I don't even. It was a hybrid. It was a thing. Yeah, it was like a think of like a, it was like a half SSD, half HDD. It was still mechanical, but not. It was it was like a hybrid of both. So it was to give you a little bit more speed, but it still wasn't as fast as an SSD. SSDs were still too expensive. And now to think that God, an NVMe is something the size of a stick of bubble gum. Is it's what's it's it, it's what's three times as fast. They just keep getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, I'll I'll never forget playing Battlefield Four. I remember on a hard drive, it would legitimately take like two or three minutes to load into the map. I would say like any the game. game would start, and I would join in every time, like when the match has already begun, just because it took that long to load on a hard drive. How about downloading the game on an HDD? Oh, I don't I don't even recall. I don't recall. How different it was. I felt bad I just, the other day. A buddy of mine that uh, when I just mentioned earlier that he's running a 1080 on his PC, when he got it, he bought a one terabyte uh, HDD. So I helped him install everything on the computer, and where he's like, "Oh, I want to download uh, Warzone." So we started downloading Warzone, and Warzone's taking forever to download, dude. Doesn't help that like, the game is like, like, like gig. yeah, <laughs> like legit, like 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 the kid in the sandlot forever, like. <laughs> That's how long it was taking. So he's like, dude, like, is there, like, what, you mean to tell me that the game is going to take this long, even if I load up on it and I got to download it? And I was like, chances are, yeah. So he's like, well, what do we do? I went, looked on Best Buy and I found an SSD. I said, buy this SSD for 100 bucks. So we went and we downloaded, he bought the SSD, went down the street, came back, plugged that into his computer, and it lightning fast. And even the load up speed, he's like, bro, this is so much faster than anything he's ever played. Yeah, it's a, it was such an underrated upgrade at the time, I remember really hyping it up as much it is Even, one of the uh, most important upgrades i would say and it was great for skyrim i was running a lot of mods on skyrim so my game would take a long time to load and i remember on the hard drive every door you walk in is a loading screen and it would be oh, 30 seconds oh God. It went from like 30 second loads on every single door you open to just instantaneous uh, i'll never forget that upgrade it was like one of the best upgrades i remember thinking it was better than my graphics card upgrade you, it makes you realize, you know what, this is a lot more important than other things that I thought were going to be, yeah. that I needed to upgrade. I mean, the graphics card always gets the most hype. And then the CPU, too. Some people think they need the newest CPU, and I'm like, no, you don't, man. I'm pretty sure whatever you got is great. Yeah, furthermore, that's still something I still want to pursue. Send your builds to originpc.com, marketing at originpc if they have an email, and I'll sit down with Adam and we'll rate your builds. <laughs> I'll be as yeah. nice. I'll be as nice as I possibly can. I can guarantee you, he won't. Yeah. Do, do people <laughs> still overclock their CPUs? Is that a thing still? We yes. We did, yes, they do. But here at Origin, we don't because the CPU, okay. the processors became so advanced I, that yeah, we didn't was, see any need to. I was gonna say yeah, like the standard for just standard speed for processors is so good now. It feels unnecessary. Correct. But there's still people like that, that do it. I guess it's squeeze. more like a, just like bragging rights now, like to say like, uh, like hey, a I flex. was yeah, just to say I, I could I was able to overclock my 12900K to just to some extreme number. And the only place I've seen that was uh, Linus Tech Tips did that like a month or two ago. That he had some guy on there that he holds the world record for the highest overclock on a 12900K. That they uh, they poured liquid nitrogen what? on top of it. <laughs> what's yeah? What's the longevity of something like that? Oh no, I have no idea, dude. I have no idea. But I think because of the liquid nitrogen, it didn't. It actually, it helped, but you could see that it was, even at its boiling point, that it was still burning the nitrogen. So every single time that they would run a test on it, they would have to fill the chamber back up. It would not just sit there. That's how hot the processor was getting. Yeah. 
but amazing to see too. You know, I'm like at the same time, I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like that guy was reaching, the guy was reaching um, overclocking speeds like there's no way possible that it would ever happen. Yeah, yeah back then you, you kind of had to squeeze in every bit that you could, but it doesn't feel like it's important to do that anymore. I think the last processor that I did it on, I actually had a buddy here at work do it because I'm not very familiar with overclocking. I never, I never got into it because every person that I knew that did it would always end up having like some sort of problem. You know, they're just, mm -hmm. they're trying to squeeze as much out of it and then they get all ticked off that, oh, my computer burned out. I'm like, dude, no one told you to overclock it. <laughs> yeah, I so, never mess with overclocking. Correct. So reason. there's one, one of my buddies here when I, the last PCI, I think it was a, I had an 8700K in my system and he overclocked that for me, but he put a small subtle tweak on it just to give it like, just a little bit more of a bump, but it wasn't anything that would have abused it. And I wrote on that thing for a long time and it was great. But once I got into like that, I got, what was it? My next one was a 9700K. I didn't even bother. I see a message in the tat, chat, and spontaneous. Tat? Oh, nice. you get, guys, the PC you guys built for Macy firsthand and it's so pretty. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> I, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no confusion. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed the PC firsthand, <laughs> and I'm glad that Macy also cleared <laughs> Yeah, that's my girlfriend. <laughs> hey, do you give her any game time on your PC, or does she have to, like, can she just play whenever she wants, or does she have to ask? Uh... <laughs> that's that, that didn't sound so convincing. <laughs> that seemed very convincing. <laughs> I totally believe you. I totally believe you. I have to shake my head now. I totally believe you. <laughs> and I also see in the YouTube chat, I kind of wish Macy J was my dad. It's funny, she was the one yelling at me constantly to upgrade my setup. She was, uh, she was particularly happy. Wait, say that again? She, she was, was constantly <laughs> the one pushing me to get a new PC a and new PC. set it up because... I was just waiting and waiting and holding out as long as I can uh, to upgrade my PC. So ah, I finally got the Origin PC. Finally! <laughs> <laughs> what kind of PC does she have? Uh, I don't even know. Find your girlfriend that yells at you to buy PC parts, lucky man. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. What did you end up doing with your previous PC? Did you turn that into something else, or did, did you use uh, uh, did you, uh, you know, what I like to call is um pay it forward? I'm I'm probably gonna end up giving it to my mom. She there you go. That's cool. She's gonna have like a, a ridiculous gaming PC just to do go on Facebook. That's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be something really cool, or you might start something and she might become the next sniper sniper granny. Yeah, right. <laughs> tactical, tactical grandma. Yeah, but it'll, it'll just be like a hand me down. It's funny. No they, back, some, so. it's funny. Somebody did an interview with that lady, and she was talking about how she came up, which is really cool and interesting. And as they're interviewing her, they start doing B-roll videos of her like playing games, and one of the pictures was her at PAX East in 2020, and a picture of me in the background like this. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I met her? <laughs> I didn't even know it. And then I met her again. When she, was at, um, she was at PAX West this year, so yep. I got a chance to meet her again. Nice. Super nice lady. That was the first time I got to meet her as well. Super nice. And last two cables, gentlemen. Last two cables. How have you been feeling about the build overall, PJ? It's great. The four thousand setups are very. I've gotten really comfortable. They're 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 very straightforward. Which especially the, especially extra? these rigs. These rigs aren't too complicated. So when you get into the, sure is that, uh, the, I'm sorry. the tough, this, uh, the GPU yeah, this yeah. is uh, Asus Tough Gaming RTX uh, 30, it's a 3070 Ti. 3070 Ti? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, 3070 Ti. 3070 Ti. I'm over here looking at the paperwork and all I had to do was look at the box over here to my left. I built my PCs, lots of Corsair. Ooh. So she has a lot of Corsair stuff. And she also said, 
I built mine, which I can't take credit for. Well, I built my current PC setup, but yeah, I can't take credit for building my own PCs. So she has one up on me. And Macy, technically, I guess you would say, because he didn't he didn't build this one. <laughs> PJ did. But the good thing is you got a new PC, as you mentioned, and I'm hoping that that amplified is the gaming experience feel a lot different. Oh, my God. PC? Okay, day? so, yeah, so I, I had an NVIDIA sponsor a while ago, and they sent me a 360 hertz monitor. Oh, and nice. My, P, my PC at the time was only getting 120 frames, so I wasn't even getting anything out of it. So once I upgraded to this PC, I'm getting like 500, 600 frames on Siege, and it's a whole new experience. Incredibly different. And whenever I use uh, NVIDIA Reflex, I can actually feel the difference much better with a higher end PC versus my lower end. What's a, just call me ignorant, but what is NVIDIA Reflex? Uh, oh, it's like, um, it's a feature that's integrated with the games that okay. basically lowers the latency for your mouse clicks. Oh, so okay, it'll, okay. It'll, yeah, so when you click, it takes a second for the PC to register uh, your click, but with uh, NVIDIA Reflex, latency is lessened and it just it feels more responsive very cool <laughs> for a whole week i heard i have so many frames <laughs> yeah so the, fr the first week that i played on this pc i couldn't even enjoy the game because i was just admiring the frame rate like i wasn't even playing the game and you know dude spinning in circles admiring frame rates I have to agree with you 100% on that. Once I finally got the current PC that I have now, once I got it all upgraded and I upgraded my uh, my TV, I don't play on a monitor. I have a 4K, I have a 4K um, OLED TV at home. But once I started playing on that thing, I couldn't even play the game itself. Yeah. Because like like just... you, I was so I, I was so blown away by what I was looking at, but I my my eyes still couldn't register to the speed of the games that I was playing. Like mm -hmm. racing games, for example, I was so used to playing them on a on a lower end PC or my Xbox One. That when I actually jumped on PC and started playing the exact same game, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I was like, hold on. I, I, even, I, I caught myself a couple times dumbing the PC down just so I can play it. And I was like, nah, this is stupid. Why am I doing that? I did this so I can play these games. And then I just I cranked it back up and now I can't even go back. But one of my buddies in chat right now, when, uh, we, he was like all-time GTA partner. My, my partner in crime playing that game. Once I switched over to PC, he's like... I would always try to convince him to jump on PC, and he's like, no, jump on the Xbox. I'm like, so it would be a 30-minute argument on who, what's, who's going to jump on what, and we would never come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going back to the Xbox, dude. It's not going to happen. You, I can't. I love that. What, the you know PC for you guys. You guys did one hell of a job. I'm glad to hear that you've been enjoying the PC, Queen Jess. Nice, dude. Congratulations on your origin PC. Welcome to the fam. Welcome to the family. Hey, you know what you need to get, Alex? See if you can find that uh, that drop of Vin Diesel going, family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> He's so oh, God. Wish I could use Reflex. but I don't have friends. I got family. It cuts off V-Sync, and I get major tearing. Interesting. I don't get, I don't get screen tearing. I've not, yeah, I've not, I've never experienced screen tearing personally. I have. It's just, it's just you gotta, you gotta tune your PC. It's not every game's gonna I, react the way you want it to. I used to get screen tearing back in the day. I remember on Battlefield Four, like in the early 2010s, screen tearing was a big problem for me on the 770. And, uh, I, I had VSync enabled constantly, but yeah, ever since I got the 1080, I never had screen tearing for any game. Yet. I'm done. <laughs> You're Ooh, done? I'm done. The cable management is beautiful. He just goes, I'm done. And just walks up. I'm done. <laughs> mm, this happens right here. Look at that. It's like a kid that just finished his like, clean plate. I'm done. Clean plate club. So good. Look, uh, look Macy, look. It doesn't bow. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no bowing. We'll get the front side over here. Let's move this out of the way. I'm going to clean up the workstation first before I power it on, but I just want to put the glass panels on. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who really believed you can't see more than 30 frames per second. Then I let him try mine. His mind was blown. Oh, yeah. Definitely frames. <laughs> As Fonte huh. said, I have so many frames. It is definitely a huge difference when you get to experience frames. 
that peeling the plastic is the, the best part. Easily. Another ASMR thing. I I grew up in a household where my dad would refuse to remove the plastic on any of it. And it my no. My TV still has the plastic on the back. I want Why? I, I don't Why? know. Why? I don't know. Well, first of all, like if you're staring at the TV itself in my living room, you can't tell it's there. But if you walk past it, like to go to the bathroom and you look behind it, then you could see it. But I just, I, I just, I, I can't. I don't know, man. It's just so damn pretty. I'm like, dude, I, if something tells me if I take it off, something's going to scratch it. I know it's there, Something will scratch the TV. I don't know. Now I'm going to go this home and a, stare at it. I'm going to go and take a picture. And, I'm going to take a picture no, of it. you're going to take I'll, it off. You're I'm going to take, take a picture it off, of it and stare at it and send it to Adam and be like, look, I'm just staring at it. I'm not doing anything with it. No, you need to take the plastic off. It's the first thing I do. This is the case I built my streaming PC in, amazing case. Ah. 4,000 series yes. case is so awesome, dude. It's so, I would say if you're a beginner builder and you you want an easy PC just to put together, this is the case to do it. There's, it's so easy. Everything is laid out straight, it's, it's straightforward. So easy, almost Adam could do it. Oh, ho, 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 Marco got jokes. It's so easy, even Adam could build it. Ah, uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> I say one time that I didn't build my own PC fully, and it's just jokes on Adam. But are we, I think we're about ready to have power. Yeah. We're, about to see the, we're just cleaning up the work area first before we do it. Do we the have wonderful the wonderful IQ? Do we have the, the Lazy Susan that we can use? Lazy Susan, my ear just popped from my flight earlier today. As, as I was saying that, ow. Am I the only person <laughs> that when you're landing, does it feel like your ears start to hurt really bad? Uh, my ears were clogged the entirety of the flight, so I assume yes, and they finally just popped now. Ow. You're supposed to chew gum. Yeah, chew gum. Or hold your nose and blow up. Yep. Co I should have chewed gum. Colorado. <laughs> there you go. I lived in my house for six years, and earlier this year I discovered my dishwasher still had the plastic on the front of it. Oh, no. Oh, that's so awesome. You get the honors oh. of peeling it off. You just kind of peeled... You didn't even You didn't even give us a slow one. You just peeled it off really quick. Who, me? Did you peel it off already? Yeah. Wait, what's the slow Where were you at? Taking your, where was the ASMR? Where was the slow-mo? Where was the close-up? Lift it? Yeah. I've got to... While we're we're doing this, if you guys are just joining us now towards the end of the stream, this is the wonderful RTS that we did in collaboration with Macy J. You can see his wonderful signature and his logo right there. And on the back, the custom UV panel. You are able to get your hands on one of these. Sorry about that. You are able to get one of your hands on these. They will ship in one to three business days. Feel free to check out. I'm going to put it with in the chat here on Twitch. I'm gonna do the command real quick. Boom, there it is. That's the link right there if you guys wanna check it out. For those of you watching on YouTube, I am going to send it as we speak. Boom, right now, there it is on YouTube. You guys can check it out. See all of the specs, if you guys have not heard the specs that is in this PC that you can get your hands on. And yeah, all about Macy and himself, the little biography, the little quote. It's really cool. It would suggest you guys check out the landing page. PJ, when you are ready to do the honors, I like the ambient lighting we have now under the PC as well. As well. I think he's plugging it in as we speak. It's down here somewhere. I believe in you. Where are you? Huh? Extension cord. The moment of truth. The, mo the moment of truth. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Trying to hide from me. Got you, sucker. <laughs> How do I feel about Chuck E. Cheese? Is this still a thing? Nice. I, I, thought, I, I thought they died in Blockbuster. It, it nah, still exists. Oh, 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 wow. I got a good uh, Netflix. Uh, I don't think it's on Netflix anymore, but there's a good video you guys should watch. It's called The Last, Blo the Last Blockbuster on Earth. Oh, I, 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 I think it's 
If there's one, I think it's like in, in Oregon or something like that, there's only one blockbuster in existence left. And people come from all over the world go to it just to like get this sense of nostalgia. It's an Airbnb now. Is it? Yep. I was just told it's an Airbnb now. You got it lined up, Alex? Right Empress, there. welcome to the stream. Right there, like that? I don't think people even have VCRs and DVD players anymore. <laughs> I have a DVD player. It's called an Xbox. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah. Am I wrong? Man, PC building back in the day, you always had to have a CD burner, though. Mm -hmm. Those are the best. Hey. Look at the IQ. Got the setup, the startup coming on right now. Boom! These things are wireless? Dude, I didn't even know that. <laughs> it's like a kid in the candy store. Boom! These things are wireless? Uh, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm, is... I'm, I'm taking this home. That's cool. Uh, we, well, if, we know one, if, we, if we're missing one from the, from the office, we know where it went. I accept all bribery, PJ, in terms of... Don't PC. worry. The system PC shut help. off. PCs go through a boot <laughs> cycle, so it'll turn back on. There it goes. Yeah, my Xbox is a glorified DVD player. Oh, the pain. That's what it, that's what pain. it, that's what it ends up becoming. It ends up becoming uh, your DVD <laughs> player, your Blu-ray player. Same thing if you had a PlayStation. Your PlayStation is now your Blu-ray player. You're like, but who? Yeah. Like, like Macy said, who has Blu-rays? I do. Um, you, you, of course you do, Marco. You still have, have a Nintendo. You were playing your Super Nintendo the other day. <laughs> I saw that. Dude, this dude, Marcos has a, his Instagram channel. What is your, your IG page called? Time Machine Gaming. It's called Time Machine Gaming. Time Machine Gaming, Gaming yeah. yes. Time, he has a whole category of all old games. Dude, he's got, system. yes. So the other day he was playing GoldenEye on his, on his SNES. Or no, your Nintendo 64. 64 yeah. Sorry. GoldenEye on the N64. Uh, he has a virtual boy he brought into the office. His desk, like, pre-COVID, pre his workstation where his desk was, was just like nostalgia central. He had a bunch of cool I, stuff on. Didn't don't you, don't you have a Super Famicom too? Yes, sir. Yeah, everything. If you, if it's classic, he's got I it. I I I forgot about that. <laughs> Looking at the fans here, I'm gonna do a mention real quick one more time before we close it out because we know you guys have important Look at that right there. Look at that. Look at that signature. That looks so good right there with that light. <clears throat> yes, it does. As I mentioned, you guys can go ahead and purchase one of these for yourself on that landing page that Mubot just posted on the Twitch chat and the link that I posted on the YouTube chat. Feel free to check it out. We are going to close things out here on Wednesday. It is hump day. We are getting over the hump. Tomorrow's Thursday. PJ, any final statements, concluding comments, anything you have to say? Um... Oh, it was a pleasure to meet you, Macy. I, you know, only knew from you from uh, from all the stuff that Adam had brought in. Got an opportunity to, you know, to build your PC for you. We're super happy that you're enjoying it, and really happy that you know you gave us the opportunity just to do this uh, limited edition launch. You know. Uh, no, yeah, it is my pleasure. I'm super proud of it. Like, I'm I'm genuinely proud of it. I got my like YouTube plaques, my TSM jersey, and now I got my PC. Yeah, this is so cool, man. To actually, kind of you know, a, it's a cool milestone for me. Yeah, so. to, to say you got well, like, thank you guys. I got yeah, to let everybody know I got a limited edition PC line going right now at Origin. If you want something just like mine, you can just go to the website and just hit buy, and that's it. Bye. Or not like buy, you know what I mean? Like buy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, from me, I'll have my little little final statements, kind of like what PJ said, just wrapping it off. Uh, you know, it's been a pleasure working with you. I know we've been working now together for around three, four months. So it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to actually do one of these RTS systems. Also giving us the opportunity to have you join us on the stream, talk about yourself, your community. So thank you for that. And, uh, I will leave the floor to you for any concluding statements you want to say for yourself, anything you have planned on the horizon or anything origin PC related, go ahead. The floor uh is all yours. I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate all the support uh, both from Origin, but most importantly, the fans. I, I really appreciate all you guys so much. Like, my career is everything. I love this stuff. And uh, again, this is just another proud milestone of mine. And uh, any and all the support is really it means so much to me. 
I like how you're making a very serious statement, and PJ is over there <laughs> grabbing us like a like a like he's picking us up and throwing us. But yes, of course, we're we're grateful to have you part of the uh, the family. Thank you for being amazing and easy to work with. Go ahead. I know for anybody that is watching that may be not familiar with you, what is your social <laughs> everything they where they can find uh, you? Everything is at Macy J. Uh, all the same, just Instagram, Twitter. Cool, I just uh, need strings now. YouTube, which. <laughs> Oh my God! He put us in the middle, and he's grabbing us. Oh no, no! With that being said, I think our I, that was my last two brain cells. I think colliding right there. That was a visual representation of my last two brain cells. That's where we're gonna f end the stream. There, we're gonna ha go ahead and close things down. Thank you to PJ behind the camera as always for doing an amazing job working on the build. Thank you guys for hanging out with us on this Wednesday. Feel free to stay in the loop. Follow us on all socials at Origin PC. Follow everything Macy J at Macy J. If you want to find me, my stuff is at Reutman TV. PJ, go ahead and shout out your Instagram. PJ builds with a Z P C S. PJ builds with a Z P C S. PJ builds PCs. Also, big shout out to Liquid House for joining us. For sure. On the stream Thank as you for well. watching, dude. Really amazing uh, live build live builder. Uh, I, live builder? Would that be the correct? That wouldn't be the correct. Custom one. builder. He's a custom, custom builder. He's Thank a, he's a, he's custom, a builder. custom builder. So big shout out to Liquid. Thank you for joining us. I will see you guys on the next stream. Feel free to keep an eye out for Twitter and all of our socials to know when the next live stream is coming, as well as I know everyone's favorite thing, giveaways. Keep an eye out for giveaways in the near future. We will see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for watching and have a good rest of your day.